Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the fucking culture shock. I am so fucking excited that I finally got this interview done. It's been five years in the making. I don't think the people at home understand how just this fills me up with joy. <laughs> so um, I am your host, Seth McKendry, or you know, whatever you want to call me, my million names. And here's my guest here today. Hello, everybody. It is I, Bam Sullivan here on the Culture Shock with Seth McKendry, and I'm fucking ready to go. I could not give a better uh, in introduction if I tried. <laughs> that's that's perfect. <laughs> I appreciate it. I practiced uh, for a very long time. I, dude, I'm so fucking excited that I actually get to do this interview because it's i as a lifelong wrestling fan and someone who wants to be a wrestler or a pro wrestler that is uh it fills me up with so much joy to know that i have a friend that's in the business <laughs> bro i am happy to be here <laughs> and uh for the people out there that don't know uh how i've known about you for about five years ever since you started which is kind of insane because uh i'm in california you're in new york <laughs> yeah i didn't know for the longest time i didn't even know that i had no idea because you know five years ago i was only wrestling for about a year at that point so i'm like oh the only people that are going to even know my name are going to be someone somewhere in the area to learn that <laughs> you were across the whole fucking country was that was <laughs> that was cool to me that was my <laughs> Uh, so I think how, uh, how you found out about that was, um, I was, uh, I posted that, uh, Dawn of the Dead, uh, Bam Sullivan, uh, uh, logo that you made, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. And I put it on my story and I tagged you in it. Yes. Wow. That was a, a long forgotten design that I put together. <laughs> And then you were like, holy shit, that's from five years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. God damn, man. What, how uh, time just flies on by. So you want to know how I found out about you? Yeah, please. Okay, so um, I'm a wrestling fan, and I, I recently graduated high school. I wrestled all four years of high school amateurly just because it had the word wrestling in it, and I just wanted, yeah. you know. No, dude, it's a great it's a great foundation regardless but yeah, yeah go on and uh i was like you know say knee deep in the trenches going through indie wrestling like it was nobody's business right i was looking through all the territory like all states and territories and i was like uh held uh analogies uh i i can't think of an analogy right now but like someone that's so deep deeply uh interested in something that they just they go through hell and high water to find out stuff oh, yeah. from people that are like fucking in mississippi or like it's like i was tape trading but i wasn't really tape trading you know what okay. i mean yeah i got you and i finally got to nywc and uh i started like looking around like the promotion and all that stuff and i went on the website and looked everything up and I started watching some of your clips and I was like, holy shit, this dude's going to be something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that, man. Honestly, uh, NYWC, uh, it's a great place, but it's for a long time was notorious for like never putting anything out. You know, it was kind of hard to see what they were doing. So the fact that you were able to dig and, and find some shit is mind blowing to me. I do my fucking homework. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, for the people out there who don't know, how, and this is the first question: How did we meet? Well, we haven't really like met yet, but like first interaction. Yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess Instagram. I, I'm pretty sure it was Instagram. It yeah. has to be Instagram because at the time I, I wasn't, I didn't really use Twitter, and. And Facebook was weird. So it <laughs> Facebook's be, always been weird. Let's be honest. Yeah, that, no, you're, that's true. It's very <laughs> true. So it's got to be Instagram. Because it was, it was 2018, if I remember correctly. It was 2018. 
and uh, I was going into uh, sophomore year and I was going to start uh, weight training. And uh, I remember I texted you and I was, dude, I was so nervous to send that text message. I didn't know how to address <laughs> you. I didn't know how to be like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know how to be like, or say, um, hey, Bam or Mr. Sullivan or something. I can't yes, remember. Yes. I can't remember what I said. But I was trying to be re as respectful as possible. You know what oh, I'm saying? Well, I mean, listen, man. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if you can tell, but it it takes a lot to, to to get me upset. So I'm very very easy to talk to. You can call me Bam. You can call me Mr. Sullivan if you want. Yeah. Me, anything you want, asshole, whatever. <laughs> it's all it's all good. But you got to understand at the time, I since I already told you, I'm a pretty, you know, shy, insecure kid. And so I'm right there with you. So. You like <laughs> you're the in my mind, you were this big time wrestler who's going to blow up and be like, you know, uh, you're, you're like this wrestler that since I've never met any, the only yeah. wrestlers I met, I wrestled with on on the team and like, you know, slam on the mess and shit. Yeah, no, I got you, man. I got but you. you're like the first pro wrestler I met. And these are the dudes I've watched on TV as a child. You know what I'm of saying? Of course. Of course. No, I get it. I get it. So, like, I held you in the regard of, like, a RVD or, like, a Sabu <laughs> or, you know, or, like, a, a, I mean, I know this is a bit of a stretch, but a fucking Terry Funk, dude. Either a Terry oh, Funk or, or a Cactus Jack. Well, let me tell you, you, you couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> even though, <laughs> but, but thank you. Thank or you very e much. Even though a Tom, what about a Tommy Dreamer, huh? A dreamer, even that's way out of my league. <laughs> I'll, listen, I'll take it. I'll take the compliment. What about a raven? <laughs> I mean, I would be a raven, so that's fine. <laughs> so, like, I texted you, and I was like, "Yo, can you, uh, can I ask you some questions about, like, weightlifting and all that stuff? You were like, yeah, give me 20 minutes. I'm driving my buddy home, and I got you. <laughs> uh... And then, like, you gave me advice about, like, sets and, like, cardio and, like, reps and, like, how if you don't have a diet it'll fuck everything up oh yeah i'm, I'm sure i went into calories and, and yeah you a whole deal <laughs> like i i would go back and scroll back on instagram right now but that would take like five minutes out and i don't want five minutes of silence yeah no no you're good man but like you went into the whole deal and i went on this on my last podcast with uh with a friend of mine since now um I'm you're the first like sort of big name person that isn't like my well I mean you are my friend but like isn't like a isn't like one of my friends that I talk to on a daily like normal basis yeah yeah you're like one of the first big name people with a following that like I can actually sit down and interview oh hell yeah man <laughs> so uh yeah you went on to say you can't be sitting on the couch eating fucking chips and you know lifting weights and thinking you're gonna see results yeah no even though that's what i do uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah no unfortunately you, you really can't out train a bad diet you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah your, your first year like listen your first year lifting weights you're, you're gonna see results regardless but after that yeah you gotta kick in that diet for sure yeah so, uh, as we've gone into, you are a hardcore wrestler or a death match or wh whatever you want to call it. Yes. Yes. I'm involved in the further ridiculous world of hardcore wrestling. Yes. I mean, it's a wacky world of professional wrestling as it is, but you, you go to the more wacky side. Correct. Yes. I go to the, to the fucking 11th degree. <laughs> uh, yes. As if wrestling couldn't get any weirder. Yes absolutely so um as a person that i mean i loved ecw but i am so glad Welcome. damn it but i am so glad that ecw isn't around today because if i well i, I mean i'm not glad that it's not around today because i loved it but i could never do what you guys do since I spent the first six months of my life in the hospital, I don't want to go back on a normal, you know, basis. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't want a, a rewards card with a, with hole punches for your local. Fuck hospital. no! <laughs> I'd rather be more of a, you know, a not a traditional wrestler, but like a. No, uh, that's fine, man. I yeah, know what you mean. yeah. I mean, I, you know, light tubes is cool and all that, but because of my past with surgeries and all that stuff, I don't want to keep racking that up. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. You, that's you why be... I give you guys, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but no, please don't apologize. That's why I give you guys so much more respect because you guys do something that I could never fucking do in my lifetime. I Even if I thought that, about man. it, you know, I, I appreciate it. And I, I have fun out there. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not just about like, you know, the, the notoriety or the attention. Like I genuinely have a great time out there and that's why I do it. And that's what makes it easier to do. Cause it's fuck on it. Honestly, it fucking sucks. So you have, it looks to, like really, it does. <laughs> you have to really like it you know, to be able to do it. I mean, nothing against you, but dude, what kind of fucking mindset do you need to have to be like, Oh, I'm going to wake up, like be like to wake up one day and be like, yeah, I want to get hit with light tubes for a living. Like, <laughs> dude, on, honestly, man, like, um, I never watched deathmatch wrestling growing up. I, no ECW, I, no ECW. I did. Um, That's as far as it went. It. Yeah, I started. I started in, in 2005, so I missed all the good stuff. Dude, you started but, when I was two years old. I know. <laughs> I, I, I missed. I missed all the good stuff. So around that time was one night stands, and I was like, oh, like there was this whole different kind of wrestling I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I went back and I watched old tapes of ECW and shit. And that shit I liked a lot. Mm -hmm. And when, when I got into wrestling, NYWC has a yearly show called the Psycho Circus. Mm -hmm. And the main event is always a hardcore match. Mm -hmm. So that was my first hardcore experience with barbed wire and carpet strips and keyboards and all the random, <laughs> all the random nonsense. And, and for me, like for me, that was good. You know, that that was enough. You know, I liked the blood, I liked the pain, but that was enough. And then uh, Matt Tremont invited me down to H2O to do my first ever death match against Jeff Cannonball. And I knew I was in good hands because Jeff Cannonball is a professional, but I was, I was nervous about the tubes. We did the tubes. I would be too. <laughs> yeah, we, did the, we did the tubes and of fucking course, of course, I fell in love with it. And then... <laughs> Ever since then, man, it's all just, it takes uh, is the tubes. <laughs> it, it, exactly, exactly. I didn't, I didn't know how I feel about it. I ended up loving it. So now, those are primarily the bookings I try to get, which is just mainly deathmatch wrestling. Yeah, dude. Don't, don't get me wrong. I, I don't want to be pigeonholed as just a deathmatch guy. Like, I still love wrestling. Yeah. If I can as go out, like a I, whole dude, of course. If I can go in the ring and I could do a whole 15 minute match, like just chaining and grappling, and like, dude, I'm all about that. I love that shit. When I, dude. The wrestler I always wanted to be was a Chris Jericho, was a Kurt Angle. Dude. You know, oh I, I my loved, god, I loved intense mat based wrestling. or like a Bret Hart or I mean, dude, a Bret speak, Hart man. We I'm don't sure speak of his name, name here, but it. you know who I'm talking about. Unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately, yes. yes. Just because, just, just like him as well. Like I, I, I did. I um I wouldn't say I idolized him as like growing up, but I loved his matches growing up. Him oh, dude, and he Eddie was, Guerrero. Yeah, dude, he was one. He was for a long time, not anymore for obvious reasons, but for yeah. a long time, he was one of my favorites. Dude, I loved. Yeah, like, he he was one of my favorites too. Dude, I love like the aggressive chain and like it feels like not a pretty wrestling match. It feels like a fight. You know, I he, I he was that. just pure intensity, dude. Oh man, it was infectious. That was always the wrestler that I wanted to be, <laughs> and now <laughs> I, I I play around in glass. For a week, <laughs> yeah. So. You know. <laughs> it's fucking funny how that turns out huh <laughs> exactly, exactly so um i think you kind of answered my question of um how how um what about deathmatch wrestling made you want to go yeah i want to do this you kind of already answered that question yeah dude honestly it was the first light too but jeff cannonball and just like the crowd reaction was insane and just the adrenaline and the visceral like the pageantry of it all i i instantly fell in love with it so um how do when did you know you first wanted to be a pro wrestler so i get this question often and the answer that i give i'm not even sure is the right answer <laughs> because it's hard to kind of like it's hard to like know as it's happening you know it's but become I, a cliche answer yeah like, like a preset so, the answer that I've convinced myself of is Vengeance 2005. It was Batista Triple H Hell in a Cell. Dude, and oh my god. When I saw that match, oh, like I don't listen, have it around here, but I know there's crazier Hell in a Cell matches, but when I was a kid and I first saw that match, I thought that was the most insane shit I've ever seen in my life. 
And I really think that was the moment that I was like, you know, I want to do this. So I'm going to do this when I grow up. Right yeah, there. exactly. And then I emailed, like I emailed NYWC. They probably don't even, they probably don't even remember, but I, I was like 13 or something. And I emailed <laughs> them and I'm like, Hey, how old do I have to be to join the school? And they told me, and I waited and finally I gave it a shot. So I'm pretty sure it was Vengeance 05. And speaking of uh, Vengeance 05, uh, so you remember back in 2008 when WWE used to put out the three disc like DVD sets? Yeah, of course. So the first ever WWE DVD I own, like I received, and I still own it to this day. It's in that fucking box over there, along with all my other DVDs, Blu-rays, and all that stuff. But it was the best. I think it was called the the best of Hell in a Cell matches. I had that and too. It, and dude, it was once I first put in the first disc and saw that Shawn Michaels Undertaker match, I was hooked, dude. Oh, dude, I have that DVD too. It's somewhere in my fucking closet. Like I would go pick it out right now, but I, I don't want to be that guy. So <laughs> no, I loved it. It's a great, it's a great DVD. <laughs> like I I mean, I don't like uh buy WWE DVDs as much as I would like to anymore. But I used to like buy them religiously, dude. Like I had, I have a whole bunch of them actually. Oh yeah, I I have I have ECW Bloodsport. I have both the One Night Stands. I have the I have the Twist of Fate. I have the the Best in the World. I have the Hell in a Cell. I have the Wrestling Society X like full fucking collection. Dude, I used, really? I used, to, I used to go crazy. Yeah, I used to go crazy. <laughs> now with the, you know now we have the internet and shit and streaming, it makes it all yeah. different. But yeah, I used to I used to collect those too. So, speaking of the Twist of Fate. Um, as I told you before, what happened with my mom, her favorite wrestler was Jeff Hardy. So growing up watching wrestling with her, uh, our favorite wrestler was Jeff Hardy and an my favorite. brother. Yeah. So my brother, um, and like my brother bought her the twist of fate DVD, which was the Matt and Jeff Hardy one. Yeah. He, he bought her that one. And like, she up until her passing she like held that as like a prized possession dude <laughs> it was uh that's awesome yeah it, it was some good shit yeah that's really cool so um if you could all right we're gonna move on to a question that i didn't want to uh like say until later but fuck it it's my show i can do what i want no one can tell me what to do man yeah yeah words but um, if you could put together a dream match, uh, a dream death match tournament, who would be in it? And another caveat, every single wrestler is in their prime. Okay, so a dream death match tournament. So I yes. guess we'll, we'll, we'll do what, eight, eight names? Is that yeah, fair? yeah, say eight names, yeah. Okay, all right. That's standard, right? Yeah, pretty much. Usually it'll be like an eight-man tournament. Yeah, unless like the doing, ECWA I'm, 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 Super I'm, 8. I'm, yeah, unless we're doing King of the Death and there's like 26 fucking names. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even think that much right now. So. <laughs> Eight names. Uh, Matt, Matt Tremont, no-brainer. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick Gage, no-brainer. Oh, you got to go with Nick Gage. Dude, absolutely, man. Masada, no fucking brainer. Um, man, Takeda. Uh, uh, Alex Cologne. <laughs> This is why I love these questions because they make you think. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely put even even with my my heat between Alex and I, I, I would go with Alex Cologne because he obviously deserves it. Mm. Um, John Wayne Murdoch, Abdul the Butcher. Oh, that's a good one. And <sighs> <laughs> just for the intensity alone, Bruiser Brody. Uh, that, would be, oh. that would be my my eight and that's oh. that's my that's my eight on the spot that's not my uh, eight like me you know if think, you were thinking about exactly. it for days. that's my eight on the spot i'm pretty sure if i asked you this question two weeks from now you'll give me a completely different answer most likely yes but most of the at least most of those names are are are, are guaranteed all right so uh what was it like working with the bulldozer himself matt tremont did I say his last name correctly? You did. I mean, I call I call him Tremont. Some people say Tremont. He's never corrected anybody. So, yes. Uh, working with I Matt just wanted Tremont, to make sure I got that right. You're a good man. Working with Matt Tremont is probably the greatest thing that's ever happened in my life. Uh, besides meeting my, my arguably my partner for life, Victoria. 
Um, Matt Tremont is one of the most selfless people in professional wrestling. And professional wrestling is a world of a lot of very selfish people. And Matt I've heard Tremont, stories. Yes. And Matt Tremont is the, is the silver lining in an otherwise unpleasant world at times. He, uh, he's given me nothing but solid advice and guidance. He's told me when I was wrong. He's helped me when I was right. He's given me opportunities that I probably didn't deserve. Um, I cannot say enough good things about it. And he, he, honestly, he would hate to hear all this. He, he, always gets, <laughs> he always gets weird when, he, when he's praised, which is, again, a testament to the kind of person he is. But uh, absolutely, man. Being able to work with Matt before his retirement is definitely like one of the top five things of my fucking life. <laughs> well dude, that sounds pretty fucking awesome oh dude it was all and to have that match with him on, on halloween i know he had a bum leg so he, he couldn't go full he couldn't go full mad tremont but i was still very appreciative of that match and here is a legitimate question i've pondered over for every single death match tournament i watch every there's always one wrestler with one of these on what's the deal with death match wrestlers and wearing michael jordan bull jerseys so the Michael Jordan Bulls jersey, and without me about to like without me about to disrespect the whole death match community, I'm pretty sure. And it, I don't want to. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I don't want to disrespect anyone. This is no, a legitimate no, no. question. I know. I, I don't know if my answer is correct, but I'm I don't pretty, want Twitter to come for me. It's like no, so. No, this is a legitimate question. They will. They will. I'm they already sure. came. Instagram already came for me, so Twitter's gonna come every now and again. Dude, I, I listen. I'm. I get it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is a tribute to Nick Gage from when he almost or when he technically died because of the it, dark side it, of the TOD. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah pretty yeah. sure that's the reason where that that jersey comes from. Now, if he got it from somewhere else, it's very it's very possible, but I think that's where it comes from. Because um, that I mean, I knew about Nick Gage before the Dark Side of the Ring came out, but uh, and like because I watched his matches with John Moxley like way early in John Moxley's career and all yeah. that stuff. And I was yeah. like a huge fan of the whole death match scene. I never want to do it. Trust me. But uh, like, I'm just a huge fan of the scene. So uh, I seen that. And then I started noticing a pattern with the Michael Jordan jerseys. And I was like, I wonder why they do that. Yeah. And I wasn't sure trying to disrespect thing. anyone. Like, no, no. Like I said, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's a Nick Gage thing. So uh, the next question is, um, since I dove way deep into your early, early career, dude, like all the way back to what was it like, which segues into the next question, which is what was it like winning the NYWC tag team and fusion championships? Dude, it was, it, honestly, it was one of those things where I probably wasn't ready. And that was just the direction that they wanted to go in. And um, it was awesome. It was awesome because you're, you're winning a championship. The, the, the school that trained, that trained me went, okay, we believe in you enough to represent our tag division, you know? And that's a really cool thing. That's a really cool thing. I, I wish I could have won it in like a real match. It was kind of like a, a weird run-in type of thing situation, but it was really Kind of cool. like a CM Punk. Yeah, it kind of, yeah, like, like someone else won it that night and then had an open challenge and we came so out. So it was like a Hulk Hogan thing? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> it like, it exactly. It wasn't like a legit. Like WrestleMania, thing. what was it, WrestleMania 6 when he I, won? Uh, was, you know? 6? Probably. Or, uh, I can't think right now, but like. It's fine. Con we can always continue. go back and, and, and correct the errors. Uh, continue. Yeah, on. so even even with that little that little asterisk there, it was, it was, it was, it was super cool. And I got to win the belts. You know, with with my good friend Boo and my girlfriend Victoria and and Crusher Dugan, you know, rest his soul was behind us. Like it was just a really cool, a cool moment. And then for the Fusion Championship, uh, I wish I held it a little bit longer. I've actually, I'm pretty sure I'm the shortest reigning Fusion Champion in NYWC history. You still that champion was, though? No, of ah. course. But that was <laughs> that was cool because that was that was the first time that somebody went, hey, you know, we believe in you on your own. You know, and 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 here's this, and you deserve it. So, dude, time timeless for me. It, it meant everything. Awesome. So, 
uh, you're surprised that I'm diving this deep into your fucking career, huh? Dude, there, there's a part of my career that I don't even fully remember. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, this is awesome to me. <laughs> See, it's like I'm a super fan, but I'm still your friend. It's not dude, weird. Exactly. No, it's not, dude, it's not it, weird at all. Hey, it's not like I'm. I have a fucking stan account. Like, no, that's, dude, that's that's, that's going to be that. We're going to go into that. Bro, it's differently. That's it is it is not weird at all. Weird. It's if you oh. if you, if you message me asking me how how big my feet are, then I'd that's be like, the, all right, yeah, that, all right, so. see, nah, <laughs> uh, uh-uh. like you know, fuck, be like, I'm sorry, dude, I I kind of can't associate with you anymore, man. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's, yeah. <laughs> so, and I'm a I'm a big you know goofball, so I'll just I I wouldn't do that, but I would do. No, some I know, I know, like that. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh how did you since you came up with uh the name the rancid kid which is you know obviously because of the punk band rancid who since i'm i'm a punk music fan but i'm not like super deep into the scene okay like i i know a couple rancid songs like some operation ivy um fuck yeah man some fucking uh on the spot shit some uh, i know dude anytime i think on the spot i'm like bouncing uh, souls uh, you know yeah, like, bro. like shit souls. like that yeah. yeah i can't list all of them right now but i know a good fair like misfits good fair amount of stuff but i'm not like if you quiz me right now i couldn't name you five songs because it's just that's how oh, my brain works i know i got you man but how'd, how'd you come up with the name the rancid kid so I, uh, I found Rancid uh, maybe senior year of high school. And Lars um, Fredrickson is the man. Let's just get that out there. Oh, dude, Lars and Tim, dude. Yeah, they're, they're big inspirations of, of mine. I, uh, um, uh, Mouse, actually, my, my tag partner, mm-hmm. or was my tag partner, my good friend. I, I've known him since the ninth grade. So we've been, oh, we've shit. been we, yeah, we, we've been friends. So it's like for, a CM Punk Coke Cabana type thing. Except yeah, all yeah. went to school together. Except a lot less money. Yeah. Yeah, a lot less money, we, uh, too. <laughs> <laughs> but like, we, uh, we all went to school together, unlike Punk and Cabana did. We did, yes. I, I've known him for 15 years. And, but up until that point, I was always, I, I really only listened to like heavy metal music. Mm-hmm. Uh, like yeah. iron i was wearing an iron maiden shirt earlier but it got all sweaty yeah dude nervous. like i love so like, i had to change no <laughs> 80s power metal a la iron maiden all the way to early 2000s uh, melodic death metal like in flames and shit like i i loved i loved metal cannibal corpse and, and you know uh, cannibal corpse yeah and then oh, mouse oh, was, yeah mouse was always big in, into punk music so he introduced me to the misfits i didn't think i'd like them i ended up loving them and then uh just one day like 2011 maybe or 2010 i just i found rancid on spotify i didn't know anything about them and uh and i just i fell in love with that kind of music man like it just i played uh outcome clicked. dude i played outcome the wolves which is probably their their most famous album mm-hmm. and every song was just like there was no skips every song was just a banger a banger a banger and it's it just, just constant just, stream of oh yeah just, and it, it just it just spoke to me in a way that i don't know it just really resonated with me a lot so I knew that I, I also really liked their their aesthetic, their image, mm-hmm. their you know the whole yeah exactly yeah. The, the the shit they're selling I was buying, <laughs> so I uh, I loved it and I and now I, I wear the hat like like Tim Armstrong I have the jacket I I, I call myself the Rancid Kid I I use Rancid the term Rancid uh, in any way that I can mm-hmm. uh, it's just it's something that I identify with and I, I another band I forgot to bring up was the Ramones. Oh, and, dude, the Ramones are a huge influence in my and life. And like the Rolling Stones and like bands like that. Sure, dude. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, listen, if you if I if you put me next to like a real punk kid, you know, they would probably call me the biggest fucking poser because I don't I don't know like the nitty gritty local punk bands, the yeah. cross bullshit. You know, I know that I know the big popular ones like the Misfits, Rancid, you know, Bouncing Souls, uh, the Ramones. Uh, I, and then there's a couple of little ones I, I, I have here and there, but for the most mm-hmm. part, I listen to the, the big popular ones. And I uh, kind of, oh, uh, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, go on. Okay. So, um, since I don't want to be that guy, I've stated this several times, but in like several podcasts, but I don't want to be that dick. That's just like, Oh, hey, hey, hey. And you know, just talks over his guests. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that cock muncher. So no, uh, dude, we're, we're conversing here. Please <laughs> go on. It's a conversation. So, exactly. um, since my, my brother, he was friends, well, he, he was friends with, uh, this one kid who had, well, I, I don't know if he's, he's still friends with him or not, 
well, I'm pretty sure he is. He's, he's a friend of mine too. Uh, he, when he was in like middle school, uh, his like dad and all them had like a punk band and like he was a hardcore punker dude like he had the he had the oh yeah up, you know whole deal <laughs> oh yeah like it was his hairstyle was like up here over here like it was, oh, yeah. it was, a, it was a whole a whole fucking the whole, the whole costume yeah a whole, <laughs> whole situation fucking cut off and everything dude and i kind of grew up with that but i i was so young at the time i didn't know what you know i was around yeah in order yeah. to appreciate it but now that I look back on it, I'm like, yeah, that was pretty fucking cool. <laughs> oh, I, I, for a long time, I, I struggled to really find myself, you know, and, and who I was, especially in your late teen, early 20 years. That's a big transitional period because you're going from this world where there's cliques and, 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 and genres and, and all this, this, you know, clicky subculture shit. And now you're now you're entering the real world now where, where no nobody one, gives a fuck about no your one opinion. Really gives a fuck. Exactly. So it's, <laughs> It's true. It, it's it was a scary time for me, and and that punk culture just made me feel like family. You belonged exactly. It was something that I could relate to, and obviously now you know I used to wear the, the jackets and I used to dye my hair blue. That there's none there. <laughs> I used to do all that shit. And uh, you ever ever see the movie SLC Punk? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was kind of like Lither. that. Yeah, exactly. It was kind of like that. I used to buy the hair dye and the jackets, uh-huh. and, then, and then as as the movie goes on. Matt Lillard realizes that punk isn't about what you look like. It's about what's in here. So that yeah. was very important for me. It's a nice story. Oh my God. Exactly. <laughs> it's sad, but it's a happy story at the end. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, you came up. How did you come up with the nickname, the trash with the stash, which is, isn't it? It's not semi-recent, is it? But it's... Dude, I don't know. I don't know how I did. I, it was one of those <laughs> things where I was probably like sitting at work on my phone and I'm like thinking of ways to like market myself. And I was like, what rhymes with stash? And just trash came to mind. And, you know, I guess to people that don't know me, I might look like a trashy person. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> trash with the stash. Why not? Let's fucking run with it. I put together a theory that goes way deeper than that. I thought of like whole Sesame Street, <laughs> Oscar the Grouch type things. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, <laughs> like, listen. Cause that's like, great. you know how Oscar lives in a trash can? Of course I do. So I was like, you know, I kind of put that together, but I was like, no, that's probably, I'm probably going way too deep into this. <laughs> uh, I'm not, a, I'm not a guy. I'm not a man of a lot of deep psychological meanings. My tattoos are meaningless. A lot of my nicknames are, are, <laughs> are whimsical and just on, on the fly. But I appreciate that it's open for interpretation like that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and dude, I'm just happy I get to. I'm probably going to say this a lot, but I'm just fucking ecstatic. I don't think you understand how happy I am in order that I'm having this conversation right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad, I'm, man. I'm trying not to mark out, but it's hard. Dude, it's I'm really listening. hard. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you're happy. I'm happy. I was looking forward for this all day at work, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm ready. I'm happy I made your fucking day, man. <laughs> Dude, this is good. It's good energy here. So, because I don't want to come off to be like, you know, I fucking hate. No, no, no. <laughs> you're, you're fine, man. You're fine. Uh, so, uh, what was it like since you were the inaugural? Uh, am I saying that word right? Inaugural. Inaugural. Some, some. You're close enough. Because you know, yeah, words learned its ability. Whole deal. Anyway, um, if I'm saying that word right, fuck it. Uh, how did what was the feeling like of becoming the first ever Danny Havoc hardcore champion? So, my initial feeling, I felt like I didn't like I, I didn't deserve it, and I, and I felt like I let a lot of people down. And and if I could bounce like, off that for a second, I'm sorry, on. but if I could bounce off that for a second, I feel like that's what most wrestlers feel like when that's kind of like that CM Punk thing. Remember with the Best in the World documentary? Yeah, when he yeah. won the. Uh, ecw title and he was like well this isn't gonna last long <laughs> yeah like he's like well uh, this isn't gonna last too much longer mode you know panic yeah uh, it, you know it, it was one of those things it was one of those things where while the selfish part of me was very excited mm-hmm. the 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 conscious part of me was like oh man but who, There's who so really, many other people that deserve right, this more than exactly, i do. exactly who really wants to see this you have a tournament with I do. Current, <laughs> right, 
appreciate it. But like, <laughs> you know, you, you have you, you have your Connor Claxtons, you have your Lucky Thirteens, you have your Alex Colones, you have all these guys who were in the Nation of Intoxication who were very close with Danny. And this is one of those types of wrestling where people like people take this shit really seriously. And, and it's a I very just, close knit family. It is. It is. And I, and I'm the outsider and I'm They're a bunch of it. insane people, but it's a very they close are. knit family. And it is. It is. And, I, and now I'm coming into your world and winning your belt. And that was very scary for me because I didn't know how people, how people would respond. Uh, I, I, I always have imposter syndrome, by the way, I never feel like I'm, I, I'm where I belong, but Trust me, you belong here right now for the next couple of hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But knowing that, like, Matt Tremont put the stamp of approval on me, it kind of calmed my nerves a bit and let me know that, like, I do belong. And, and, I, and I, I'm winning this championship for a reason, which definitely helped my – I have terrible anxiety. It helped my, anxi my anxiety tremendously. I do too, yeah. Yeah, I, I know how you feel. Dude, it's horrible. And I was – once I got to that point – I was truly able to realize just how fucking lucky I am to have ever even touched that championship and be in um, the position you're in. Oh, dude, it, it meant everything to me. And 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 I cut the promo after I won the belt, and the promo was true. I that I did promo not, was fucking great, by the way. I appreciate it, man. It was all true. I didn't know it was not rehearsed. It was on. I the felt fly. like it was a Dusty Rhodes type promo, dude. Dude, I was like hot times, Danny. Oh, hard the times. Hot times. Exactly. And and in my mind, like when I cut the promo and I, I what, everything I said was true. I, I I didn't know Danny for years. We weren't best friends. I wasn't coming over his house for holidays, you know. Mm -hmm. But he always treated me with respect and. He, as you should anyone in the business right what but I like what but your people are very protective it was a of different shit, level man. of respect yeah people are very protective of this shit and everyone kind of like when you're the new guy you kind of have to eat shit for a while but not with kind of like when you're in school you know exactly exactly but but not with danny danny treated me like he knew me for years he was always kind to me he always came up to me and shook my hand and said hey bam you know how you, how, how you been like so that meant a lot to me that you have the guy who's way up here treating me better than some of the guys who are down here, you know, like you're the so, little guy and he treats you with so much respect. Exactly. So for him to treat me with, with that kind of that level of love and respect, um, it, it was just all the sweeter to, to win that, that belt, man it meant everything. Awesome. Well, uh, okay. I got a question for you. That's not on the script. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how are you feeling right now? Am I doing a good job? <laughs> you're, you're doing a great job. All right. Good. <laughs> I, I like the barbed wire, by the way. Nice, oh, thank nice you. little touch. <laughs> thank you. I did. I, I covered my fucking microphone and barbed wire because I'm a goddamn mark. Of course. You, you have to be with, you know, with the love of hardcore wrestling and ECW <laughs> and Terry Funk. You, you fucking have to be. You have to. Yeah. So um, uh, we already covered what was your first thought or did we already cover that? The question is, what was what was your first thought when you won your first championship in professional wrestling? Yeah. Yeah. It was the, it was the tag team belts. We, we talked about it. And like I said, I, I wish it was a more of a match, but to, for my own, my own school to say, Hey man, we believe in you was awesome. They rocket strapped you is what you Oh yeah. dude. Yeah. It was awesome. Loved it. Loved so it. At the, I'm sorry. I, I, I forgot. It's just the whole, you know, short-term memory thing bro it's don't a, be sorry at all man I, I i feel like shit for doing that, unacceptable <laughs> well nah, thank you <laughs> <laughs> all right so if ec since we're talking about ecw and all that stuff um if ecw was around today how do you think you would fit in that promotion and do you think you would even fit in the promotion a hundred percent. Yeah, I, I definitely uh, and this is I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt but this is nope. prime paul e ECW. Oh like, yeah. Yeah. Like I Taz Kata Hajime, you know. <laughs> like I, I think I'd fit in pretty well. I think that they would beat the shit out of me until I earned it, you know. But I, <laughs> I, I, I think I think I'd fit in pretty well. Um because that's how they, they are. They yeah, and it, it's that was a different time, man. That was the kind mm -hmm. of time where you you set you up were the fighting ring. tooth and nail oh, just yeah. to you set you'd be like a Mikey Whipwreck. Exactly. Who, where you're setting way, up the ring just to like, of course who by the way is a oh, good friend of mine and he, what, what he, was it like working with him oh dude mike whipwreck if there's no mike whipwreck there's no there's no nywc you know that's mikey was the guy there for a very long time so and if there wasn't any mikey whipwreck there wouldn't be any bam so 
dude, honestly, there's a good, there's a very fucking good chance. So working with Mike, he's awesome, dude. He's, he's, he's absolutely a sweetheart. He's down to earth. He knows when to crack the whip and, and be serious. But for the mm. most part, like he's super down to earth, man. You know, he's, he's a, a tough trainer, a great mentor. Um, Mikey's the man. So I think having that, having that lineage kind of somehow trickling down, I think I would do pretty well. Uh, in ECW. And I think I have a kind of a look and an attitude that would definitely flourish in that kind of environment. Do you think you would go over with the ECW crowd? I think, I think they'd make me earn it. Like prime Philly ECW no. crowd, kind of like how they made Tommy Dreamer earn it. Yeah. They would, they would definitely, Sandman. they would definitely shit down my throat probably for, for years. They'd but break think, your neck and shit down your fucking throat. Oh yeah. They would, yeah. they would, they would make me eat shit for a while, but I eat think they didn't like it. <laughs> exactly but one of my specialties one of my specialties is getting my fucking ass kicked until the crowd comes up behind me so i think I, they would they would make me earn it but i think i would do well so that that's like a mikey whip, whipwreck trait believe it yeah that's it is believe, yeah because that's what that's what he was like from the tapes i watched at ecw he like besides winning that match with steve austin that was just you know by the seat of his pants he was, yeah. he like, he barely even won that title. I'm dude, no disrespect Mikey, to Mikey, but like, no, no, if dude, you Mikey, watch that dude, match, dude. you see how close that was. Of course, dude. Mikey, Mikey is your textbook white meat, you know, baby underdog face. baby face. Oh, yeah, fighting from underneath the whole time. Like, like, come like out. <laughs> exactly. That that's his shtick. And that was the that was what I that was the technique I utilized when I wrestled Jimmy Lloyd for Hardcore Kingdom. That was my first real H2O match. And I'm mm -hmm. walking into these bloodthirsty, you know, New Jersey, Philly fans. And mm -hmm. I thought to myself, well, if Jimmy Lloyd just fucks me up for fucking 15 minutes and I just keep fighting back and fighting back, maybe, maybe I'll get them. And I did, I got them and they, they all rose up behind me and it was very cool. So yeah, I, Mikey and I are, are a lot alike in that way. All right. So, um, what was, what was it like since you, um, worked in IWA Mid South recently? for the ecwa no actually no that's completely that's a completely different oh uh, so now i feel was, stupid no no but no, no. It the was, ecwa uh, was, super eight tournament yes i did the super eight tournament which was which was very very cool um don't know what the fuck i did don't know what i did to, to earn that spot but uh the guy mm -hmm. he reached out to me and offered me the booking and of course i took it because i was iwa right or was it a different promotion? No, a different promotion. It's uh, East ECWA is the promotion. Okay, then I, uh, I, yeah, I, I'm, I was thinking I, I was thinking IWA because I know you worked for them recently, but uh, no, it's all I got my day. facts mixed up. Bro, there's so many fucking initials and acronyms in wrestling. There's a, there's probably <laughs> a bajillion IWAs and ECWs, but uh, that was that was really cool and it meant a lot to me because the year the year prior, uh, Matt Tremont was was in the tournament. Mm -hmm. And I, I like that tournament because it's a tournament that's launched so many people's uh, careers, careers, but it's predominantly a pro wrestling tournament. So the fact that now every year they throw like a hardcore guy in there, you know, that was really cool for me to, to, to fit that spot. Cause I saw those tapes last night of, I, I was watching, uh, I can't remember who you were wrestling. I, I feel like shit for the dude that uh, I can't remember his name, but you were wrestling him and you were like, when you went out, you were flipping off the crowd. You were like, fuck you. Like, you know, you made the crowd hate you. And I think that's an art in professional wrestling. There's an unspoken art to making people hate you. You know yeah, what I mean? De 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 definitely. And, and for me, I'm, I'm predominantly a pretty quiet, nice dude. So mm -hmm. the, the heel shtick is, is always interesting for me. Like at, uh, at, at, at the uh, fucking tournament of survival for for GCW, mm -hmm. you know when I'm gonna get I, into that too. Working for yeah, GCW, yeah, yeah. All right, well then I, I won't say too much, but that that was yeah. a moment where I had to kind of adjust. So yeah, it's it's interesting being a heel. There's definitely an art to being a heel, and you have to be careful not to be a cheap heel. You know, like you can't get that cheap heat. Exactly. I don't. I don't want to come. You have out to get and, real and, heat to where they want to fucking blow up your car afterwards. Exactly. Exactly. You know what I mean. I don't want to come out and, and insult the local sports team. You know, that's, 
that's so that's so like you're going for that mick foley cheap pop huh <laughs> it's so disingenuous and so hokey like it, there's all due respect a, to mick foley but you got to love the cheap pop. yeah well, i mean he even admits that it's it's like it's a, that's why he always does it now like, he's, very, <laughs> he's very self-aware of how hokey it is but yeah uh, it's, there's definitely an art form to to being a bad guy definitely and i mean i think i could be a bad guy because i mean like i'm a nice guy if you've watched or listened to the podcast before i'm a nice guy even though you're talking to me i'm a nice dude and i like i care and i'll help people out and i'll listen to people and help them out with their problems and everything but depending on the person give a fuck i can give a fuck about your feelings dude you know what i mean like yeah. i like I'm not talking about you specifically, but I'm no, talking know, as an example. Mean. I could be like, yeah. I can give a fuck about your feelings, man. I give a fuck what you think. It doesn't yeah, matter to me. For 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 me, it's like, um, you know, we all like it's the yin and yang, right? All, all good has a little bit of bad. Yeah. And all bad has a little bit of good. So yeah. I just I just take the worst parts of me, my own character flaws, and I just amplify them. Mm -hmm. Like I have a tendency to like act like my my vocabulary is is very e extensive you know so that's and kind I, of, oh i'm sorry no no that, no is that kind of like um that term in wrestling where you um you where the best wrestlers take their personality and just turn it up to 11 and turn it up yeah exactly but when i'm being a heel instead of instead of turning my whole personality up i just take these character flaws that i have mm -hmm. and turn them up so i act very Arrogant. Like, that guy's an asshole exactly i act very arrogant i'm very sarcastic i smile a lot because it's 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 a shit you got a good smile about it it's a it's shit a eating <laughs> grin you know what i mean so i i take the worst parts about me and i and i very much amplify them and you take the parts you like in people to bounce off that question you take the parts in people that you you're just like oh that guy's a douchebag you know what i mean like yeah you take you take the parts in people that are like say the typical douchebag is the dude wearing tap out t-shirts after <laughs> like think about it tap, tap out t-shirts haven't been cool since the ufc used them in like 2006 yeah no you're let's you're be completely about, honest here. you're 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 talking about the kyles of the world yes you know? yes yes so say here's the typical douchebag he drives a monster truck not a monster truck but like it's like yeah, I know. Lifted. Probably some some lifted shit you know it's like you've seen harold and kumar go to white castle right of course i have those guys <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> those exactly. guys are who i'm talking about You're like yeah, exactly. extreme yeah fuck you you know like those guys you, you take the parts of people that you hate and you use them and manifest them into your own like not liking but like your own deal and just amplify them to 11 oh yeah of like, course oh yeah fucking hate me Dude, in my in my in my everyday life, you know, I'll see something and I'll go, oh wow, that guy's a fucking prick because because of because he did that or oh what what a what a shitty thing to do. And I take those mm -hmm. things and I just you know I use them for my own benefit when I when yeah. I'm a heel, you know, hundred percent. Because being a heel, it, as I said before, it's a fucking art form, dude. I the way I see it is you're being an asshole and you're getting paid for it. It's the fucking greatest job in the world. Dude, it's 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 an awesome job. Uh, you don't have to work as hard. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's harder to make people love you <laughs> than it is for them to hate you. Oh, absolutely. So my job is being a heel is very important because not only do you have to get yourself over as a heel, but you mm -hmm. also have to get your baby face over as a baby face. Yeah. So you got to make the other guy in order to make yourself. Exactly. So it's it's a very it's a very skillful art form. I I agree. All right. So um next question is what was it like working for gcw so that was the coolest uh ah, i i exaggerate a lot <laughs> this is definitely one of the coolest moments of my life um that was the biggest crowd i ever wrestled in front of from my understanding there was about a thousand tickets sold so there was about a thousand people there it was the biggest crowd I ever, I ever wrestled in front of and i'm wrestling a guy who doesn't fucking like me and <laughs> like for a shoot like for a shoot like does not like me. so <laughs> oh fuck was, here we go it, it was a test on all fronts it was a test if i could hang with within gcw it was a test if i could work with someone who doesn't like me you know it, it was a test all around for so many different reasons but for me to come out and everyone's singing astro zombies by the misfits everyone's singing my entrance song mm -hmm. dude i'll never be that high again in my life 
that was just some next level high, dude. Uh, that day, like, that's one of those times where you like you you understand that you're in the happy times. You know, Wait, you have to take take a second and like yeah, exactly just soak it on in and get all it in, in and, and get be it like, in. holy shit, this is the greatest job in the world. Oh, a hundred percent. Cause, cause no. we know, we, we know life is, is highs and lows. Yeah. It's, and, and when you're in the strikes low, and gutters, man, exactly. And when you're in the lows, you always remember, ah, the highs. I wish yeah. I appreciated it when I was there. That was mm. one of those moments where I was able to walk out and take a second and really appreciate what I was experiencing. Mm. So next question is I seen that you have your own sauce. I do. Well, it's in the work. It, do you, is it like released or is it still in the works? Um, it'll be released at the end of this month. I, I, I got my bottle because uh, obviously, you know, mm -hmm. I have to approve of the ingredients and shit. I want to make sure that whatever, whatever my name goes on, I actually approve of. So mm -hmm. you don't want to be one of those guys that just signs off. Give me the money. No, 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 no. <laughs> if, I, no. If, I'm, if I'm putting this shit out, I need to like it. So uh, I told him exactly what I wanted. Uh, he, he, he gave me a list of ingredients. I picked the ones I wanted. He sent me a bottle. First, first, first try, immediately loved it. So it's all good. The label's all printed up. We're just waiting for the end of this month before it's, uh, it's released. So um, how, like, how did that come about? How did the question come up being like, yo, you want your own sauce? <laughs> like yeah, so this that uh, seems a very unorthodox you know oh, dude, it, it, it was one of those things that will only happen in, in because of pro wrestling the weird the weird world of pro wrestling so yeah. this guy uh he works for snack season sauces that's his his, his uh upstart you know hot sauce company sauce biz, yep and he reached out to a couple of the guys i like uh jimmy lloyd has a sauce coming out uh I, G, I, maybe gcw or ricky shane paid a couple of us dudes this guy reached out to Mm -hmm. so one day i woke up and i had a dm on twitter and he's like hey man like how much how much to collaborate with you you know it, like let's let's work together you know or would you be interested and i was like absolutely let's fucking do it mm -hmm. uh we we i was like hey man how about we do one cooler what if i what if i what if i design the label and everything well I'm, we'll make it really special and he's like yeah let's fucking do it and that's how it happened just completely random only because of wrestling does this random shit happen I mean, hell, I tried to, since, you know, I used to play video games a lot on YouTube, but I moved that over to Twitch and I've used my YouTube predominantly for the podcast stuff. And I remember, uh, I don't know if the videos are still up or not, but I started a WWE 2K16. Uh, it, it, was either, it was either 2K16 or 2K17 career mode. And I, since I was a fan of yours, I mean, I still am, but like, it was like, you know you were doing some really cool shit i made you in the video game and <laughs> i did a career mode as uh, you yo that's fucking tight <laughs> i don't know if the videos are still up or not but i hope to god they are but if they they're most likely not because youtube just fucking hates me but um i did that and i went all the way to the hall of fame well, where I, I sure hope your fucking career mode comes true <laughs> i i hope i hope so because you know you beat taker all the whole deal like it, oh my all, god all don't, don't don't tell him that <laughs> <laughs> i mean dude if there's one thing in life i want I, like if there's since i have a wrestling bucket list um and that bucket list is i have to meet undertaker once it doesn't even have to be like i don't even need to wrestle the guy because i don't want him to die and i don't want to be responsible for it but i just want to i just want to like meet him be like hello sir how are you doing like you know it yeah, could even yeah. be like a quick like five second interaction sure sure those five seconds will fucking make my childhood oh dude you, that'd be awesome you know what i'm saying that'd be awesome yeah since i have a wrestling bucket list that we'll go in going after but um the last question i have on this whole list of you know check marks is if a major promotion called you up all right fuck where's the question all right if a major promotion called you up which one would you want? Which one do you think would best fit your style? And which one would you want to work for? Okay. I think I got that out. Yeah. So um, obviously, if any major wrestling company hit me up, I would be very open to negotiation and, and working for them. That's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. um, I personally think that AEW would very much benefit my shtick that i'm selling mm -hmm. 
uh, of course, I'd love to main event WrestleMania one day. You know, all uh, professional wrestlers, obviously. Be honest, yeah. I don't get listen. I don't give a fuck who you are. I know, I know, I know. Goals change and plans change, but but when you're a child and you realize you want to wrestle, we all want to do WrestleMania. That's the yeah. only thing you want to do. Of in course, life. we all want to walk out and see ninety thousand people. Like obviously, but but from a realistic standpoint, for for you got to set brands, realistic goals. Yeah, and for the brand that I'm selling. I think AEW would be able to accommodate that much better because they, they already do hardcore matches. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have friends there, you know, I, I think it would just, I would have the freedom to, to be who I am without any micromanagement restrictions, of course. And I'm sure there's agents and shit too, but it's not yeah. as pro it's probably not, not, not as invasive probably as, as the WWE because and I'm not trying to burn because I don't burn bridges. I blow them the fuck up. Because that's if you're going out, you better go out strong. You know what I fair. mean? Yeah, fair. So I'm not trying to burn or blow up any bitches before I get there. But from the stories I've heard, the WWE is very micromanaged. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sure. You know, that it's it's a billion dollar product with a lot of. And investors. it's a publicly traded company. So exactly. I, I would I completely so I'm, understand. I'm not why, surprised. You know why yeah. they're so micromanaged because they oh, have to keep course. sponsors happy. Because if the sponsors aren't happy, then, you of know. Course. They won't get as much money and and it's not always money a, is what makes the fucking you know, world go round. It's not always a bad thing. You know, it, it's good to have a, a clear direction of what you want. Yeah. Um, but I, I just think AEW also like look at the landscape. Like I, I'm not I'm not six four. You, you know, I, I I think hell, I'm only six foot one. <laughs> you're taller than me. Uh, really? You're taller, yeah, you're taller than me. So look oh, at well, that. Well, fuck. <laughs> look at that. Exactly. So when when you and you're at, like ten years my elder. <laughs> you know, please. So, uh, so when when you're looking at the landscape of you know WWE, the land of the fucking giants, and AEW, which is a lot of like independent superstars, mm. I think I would just do better there, you know. But obviously, if if Canyon Seaman called me today and said, "Hey, how, would you like to work for the WWE?" Of course, I'm saying yes. But I just feel like because if that's could, a no-brainer. Exactly. But if I was God and I could just pick one. AEW, I think, would would be a much better environment for what I'm selling. All right, cool. So, as I as I, <laughs> as I uh, um, it really, uh, talked about earlier, let's just say that in the simplest terms because I can't speak, which is weird. But simplest terms, what I talked about earlier was um, my wrestling bucket list is. Uh, a lot of these people have already retired, so it's it's kind of breaking my heart that I got to take them off the list. But my wrestling bucket list is I have to do these things in the wrestling industry before I call it quits and say I'm done and hang up the boots and not have any retirement tours. Because uh, okay. we'll see about that. When, <laughs> when a wrestler retires, they don't really retire. You nobody know what I mean? Re nobody retires. I thought fucking Shawn Michaels was the only one to retire, and that motherfucker came back and wrestled again. So I, I mean, and it it broke my heart to see him wrestle again because he went out <laughs> the best way yeah. you fucking could. I know. I listen. All res all respect. I love the all, heartbreak. Kid, like I, I, I mean, good. we're that we're not good. throwing like, any shade. We love no, no, we no. love him. But come on, you went out the best way you fucking could. WrestleMania against the Undertaker. Yeah. You can't get any better than that. Right, exactly. And it was the main if if I remember correctly, it was the main event. It probably was. And that motherfucker came back and wrestled. So nobody retires. But please They'll be like, I need to pay my mortgage. Exactly. <laughs> I got bills. <laughs> Rent due this month. But yes, I go got on. bills, daddy. They're exactly. gonna turn off the water. They're gonna turn off my heat. And then the wife gonna be mad. They're gonna kick me in the butt, give me a watch, and be like, get the fuck out of here. I mean, honestly, if that's the case. Then, then Sean. I mean, what? I don't know what kind of investments you were making in the last. <laughs> you should be. You should be good. You should be good. Uh, I probably butchered that Dusty Rhodes promo, but I, I, I put it in my own interpretation. Oh yeah, I didn't. I didn't want to plagiarize the man. You did well. I love the guy, but I don't want to. You know, I don't want to. No disrespect, <laughs> nobody. So, uh, I mean, at this point, we've already talked about all the normal questions. My wrestling bucket list is I have to meet Taker. I have to wrestle for the WWE at least once on like television. Oh, I, lo I lost your audio, buddy. Oh, oh uh, all right. I got you. There I we go. 
uh can you still hear me yep i can hear you all right cool because you know it, it was it was weird but um but the bucket list is i got to meet taker i got to wrestle on live television at least once i have to win a championship at least once win a tag team title win a win a world title win like an interim title and stuff um i have to have my own merchandise have my own action figure make it in a fucking video game and then be in a hall of fame no matter what hall of fame it is Hell, I'll even settle for TNA at this point. Well, you're not asking for a lot. Just everything. <laughs> like, dude, I ha- all, all I want to do is I want to wrestle Chris Jericho. And obviously, I want to wrestle you, too. Well, dude, that'd not, be great. Not in a hardcore death match because I've already stated how I don't want to do that. I want to wrestle you oh, in a I'm, straight up I'm Eddie Guerrero, tubes. Dean Malenko type. I'm, I'm going to bring some tubes and you're not even going to see it coming. Oh, fuck. Here we go. <laughs> I'm trying to win, man. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll put the kid over. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's 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 a great list, man. That's that's an awesome list. Um, so if I'm ten years older than you, so I was you're... born in two thousand three. I I Fuck my I life eighteen in January. <laughs> okay, you're eight, you're eight. okay, so I started training at twenty two. So, um, dude, you're there, man. You're there. Let's go. I still have four years of uh, college too. Since I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move to Arizona go to college and there is a there's the arizona pro wrestling center which okay for for the life of me i can't remember who uh who runs it they're probably gonna hate me if they ever find out about this but uh for the life of me right now i can't think of their name but uh there's a person who runs it and like maybe an hour away from there is championship wrestling from arizona yeah championship wrestling hell yeah which airs like locally and that's yeah. what i want to do i want to yeah. like wrestle there for a year and i watched a video from santino bros wrestling academy in california they have a youtube channel and he said the dude said you got to have a good workout regimen you got to be in shape and then you got to go to a beginner school where you learn the fundamentals and a really good idea you don't really have to do this but a good idea is to go to a finishing school like a uh, lance storm wrestling academy or like a Rikishi, you know, like something yeah. like that. And then you'll be like set and good to go. That's great advice. And uh, that's what I was thinking is I'll just, uh, I'll go to college and then I'll do all that stuff. I'll keep the, I'll keep the writing part as like a back burner for like writing movies and all that. that that'll be a back burner. And the, a good reason for me to go into film is so I can like, you know how you film your own promos and stuff. Yeah, could, you'll learn. You'll learn a lot. There's there's a lot of crossover there. And I could like you know film my own shots and do like some unorthodox shit that definitely man. Many people, yeah, dude. There's you know. there's a for for film and wrestling is the crossover is obvious. You know you would you would have skills that would, that would complement both things. You know. And I just want to learn how to time out, kind of like how uh, we referred to earlier with the CM Punk Best in the World documentary. How you remember how he said. Uh, he knows how to time out a TV show. Yeah, it's cut, he it's knows cut, how to cut commercial and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to learn how to do that shit and just write a film. So think about how good my promos would be if I learned how to write a full feature length film. Oh yeah, you'd be dude. You'd be you'd be leagues uh, past the fucking current indie landscape of promos. You would you'd be way ahead of the game. And uh, well, that's that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get at least three or four steps ahead. So I can, you know, kind of slap myself in the face and wake up and be like, yeah. all right, let's fucking do this. No, my, my advice to you, man, I would it's definitely start before 20. You know, definitely start training before 20. It's never too early mm-hmm. to, uh, to start training. You know, even if you're not in the shape you want to be in or even if you're not as, as advanced in film as you want to be, start as soon as you can. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, wish, I, I wish I didn't wait till 22. I, I I wish there was, a, there's a student at NYWC. He's older now, but he started when he was 16. Like, I wish I started that early because you have all this time and it goes by so fast. See, I would have started like wrestling training as early as I could, but you know, high school wrestling got in the way and I was like, Oh busy. yeah, no, I, dude, I, I was busy slamming people on their heads. <laughs> dude, it's, it's all good. It's all good. You don't have to start in high school, but definitely like mid to late teen years is, that's like such a prime spot to start training. Mm. And uh, I, since we're talking about wrestling, well, amateur wrestling at this point, 
Did you know that Neil deGrasse Tyson was the captain for his high school wrestling team? I didn't know that. I I I, I respect Everything. I respect the shit out of the guy. I fucking love him. He's a genius. But uh, I didn't know that. He was the captain of his high school wrestling team, and he had that's the, awesome. He had the black dynamite chops and everything. That's he looked, awesome. He, so he, he can looked, he can school your he can school your ass on, uh, with astro fucking physics, and he could probably slam you down and, and tap you out too. And he can whoop your ass, yeah. So, <laughs> and what I found out was the um, community college I'm going to go to. They offer, uh, they obviously obviously offer amateur wrestling, but they also offer Brazilian jiu jitsu. Oh, that's awesome. And they offer the martial art Bruce Lee invented, which is Jeet Kudo. Okay. And like they offer a bunch of, you know, a bunch of different martial arts. And since I have friends, I have a friend who recently became a black belt who I've had on the podcast before. Um, I told him once I start making consistent money, I'm going to take him on the road with me. And all we're going to do is he's going to train me jujitsu since I, what he told me was it takes 10 years to get a black belt give or take right okay and since you're on the road wrestling 300 days a year maybe right i'd say about average 250 maybe 300 if you're like wrestling every day yeah if you're like at the wwe and shit yeah yeah and since if i'm doing that i don't have time to like devote 10 years to the gym you know what i mean because i'll be fucked by the time i'm done wrestling i'll be i don't know what age yeah so that's why i told him i'll just take him on the road with me and we'll just like, he'll just teach me. He'll kick my ass, and we'll smoke afterwards. Like, like dude, hell yeah, man, dude. Like, I, I I wish I knew that shit. I really do, because again, there's so much crossover there, man. So many, so much shit that you can use from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in professional wrestling and just MMA in general. Yeah, absolutely, man. I I wish I had those those natural instincts. I wish I did all that stuff when I was younger. Because what I want to learn how to do is say. Since I already know how to do some stuff, I don't know quite a lot, but I know, you know, enough to say, get somebody on the ground. What I want to try to do is I want to learn enough to where, um, say someone gets out of line and like, say we're wrestling in a match and someone gets out of line and they're like, oh, we're doing this kid. And it'd be like, nope, put him in a rear naked choke and the match. Dude, I saw the fuck out. It's, like, it, it's funny you mentioned that. I, I saw a clip recently. Do you know uh, uh, Lindsay Snow? Uh, I've heard the name, but I haven't okay. been okay. able so, to. So, so she, she's an independent wrestler. She's based in, in Florida, I, I believe. Mm-hmm. She used to team with uh, Shannon Moore and shit down there. She, uh-huh. she yeah. honestly kind of looks like Shannon Moore. Has like the makeup, the dreads and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. She's really cool. So she wrestled this girl, uh, Sadika, I believe. Um, who's a, a, a bigger, you know, girl and she's a deathmatch wrestler and she gives Lindsay a really unsafe power bomb. So Lindsay no sells the power bomb, gets up and puts this chick into a fucking knee bar and makes her <laughs> tap out for, for real. Like change it, changes the whole finish and makes her tap out for real. Like, bro, Be that's like, fuck why, with me. This is what exactly, exactly. <laughs> that's why it's good to have those skills. It's fucking awesome. Awesome. See, I just want to learn how to do these things. So it, so the friends I have in the business, I can pass on the traits and be like, all right, it's going to suck, but let's fucking do this. Yeah, yeah, man. Man. No, dude, it's great to have those skills and like catch wrestling and Muay Thai and just, you know, oh, yeah. knock somebody out is a great skill. Oh, to yeah. have. God, God forbid somebody stiffs you or something or, or, you, or you feel unsafe in there. Make the motherfucker tap just out. Fucking, for you. you know, just yep. go. Yeah. Yep. And in college, I'm going to learn how to speak Japanese because I want to. I want to try to wrestle in Japan. Oh, that's a hundred percent on my list too. <laughs> yeah. uh, and um, since in high school, I never uh, like had to take um, foreign language classes since you n- normally for my high school, you have to take two years of foreign language. Yeah. yeah I never cool. had to. So I kind of beat the system in a way where they were like, you know, fuck it. Just let them go. Okay. Kick them to the curb. Anyway, let's, just get them fuck out of here. So yeah. what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go to college and learn Japanese. So instead of like learning it at, while I'm there, I'll just already know it and be able to yeah. carry a conversation. Yeah. That'd be, it's a great skill to have. It's a great yeah. skill to have. I, I, I hopefully I'll, hopefully I'll see you there. Dude. I, 
I'm telling you, I need to wrestle you at least once in my life. Dude, I'm down, man. I'm and then down. after that, we just fucking chill and like just smoke a little pot and it'll, bro it'll i'll fun. i'll, I'll like, roll up a fucking i'll roll up a fucking doobie man we'll chill we'll have a like, great match i'm yeah. ready man dude i'm telling you it would be like it's it's already one of my wrestling bucket lists if i wrestle you then there, there's one off the list i don't want to <laughs> wrestle nick gage all respect to nick gage but i don't want to i don't want to die <laughs> so uh you don't want to be David Arquette and get no, the no, I don't. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> speaking of, oh, speaking of Arquette, thanks for bringing that up. He's gonna be in Scream Five. Oh hell yeah! Since uh, Scream Five releases the day before my birthday next year, which nice. is January fourteenth. Nice. I gotta catch up. That's that's my girlfriend's like favorite series of all time. Scream. Since uh, that would be the first time, it would be the first Scream movie without Wes Craven's involvement. Oh okay. Since he died uh, in 2015, like, when the Scream TV series was being produced on MTV. Okay, so so four was already out at that point. Yeah, yeah, four okay. was already out at that point, and they went on to do a uh, TV series, which eh, I heard mixed things. If if you watch, if you're like a MTV person that like watches those type shows, it it's it's okay. Okay, it's got it. It's got a good amount of horror to it, but. Once you get to the third season, that's the first two seasons don't have the scream mask. They don't have the ghost face mask. Yeah, it's a stupid. different it's a different mask. Yeah, it looks like it's all melted and just Yeah. Season 3 is when they went to VH1 and they got they finally got the scream mask and season 3 is when it drops off completely. It's oh, that's just, too bad. Oh, it's just it it breaks my heart to see it, but it was just garbage. Oh, was, that's too bad. Uh, man. I know it's it sucks when that shit happens. Like I I just I just I just watched um, I just watched Spiral. From, Dude, from the oh my god, I love that movie. <laughs> you, you you liked it? I loved it. Ah, oh come on. Uh, listen, listen. I was did I did I have fun? Yes. Was I entertained? Yes. But I don't uh, oh I don't you. uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, I don't um, I didn't love it. You know, I, I thought it was, I thought it was okay. I thought yeah, it was, please. Thanks. Oh, I thought it was funny when it needed to be because like what Chris Rock wanted to do from what I heard, he wanted to bring a sense of uh, comedy to it, but make it to where you want to laugh and not like, oh, that was bad. I'm going to start laughing. Yeah. No, they, you know listen, I mean? like, like I said, I had fun. I, mm -hmm. I, and I enjoyed it, but there were some things like I I I hated the big reveal at the ends. Yeah, I, it was it was too cookie cutter. Like it was, could, dude. It was very pay, cookie cutter. If you were paying attention, you could pick you could piece it together. Like, I know, I know. Man. And and when he like at the very that final scene when he's giving like the speech to to Chris Rock and everything, uh, it's it's so like it's so like generic bad guy. I was like, Ugh. like you could. Because think about it. You had Darren Lynn fucking Bowsman, who created one of the best Saw movies of all time. Saw 2. So, so yeah, Saw 2 was great. Yeah, like, come on, dude. You had Darren Lynn Bowsman directing. You could have done so much better. I know. That, and, it, like, it the felt writing so flat flat for me. I know the the right oh dude the writing was oh, very good. it was very oh, generic good. writing. It was very <laughs> generic writing. Uh, I gotta say though, some of the traps were really cool. Like I, yeah, I liked yeah. I liked Samuel L. Jackson on like the the puppet fucking thing. Yeah, like, at, was, at the with the vials of blood. Yeah, that was cool. I liked the dude in the beginning with the hook through his his tongue. That was yeah. sick. The guy who had a had to rip his own the finger fingers. Yep. The, yeah, the, some of the traps were cool. And yeah. like I said, I had fun. It delivered in the it delivered in the let's say I thought so that I it delivered so. in the trap department. It was yeah. solved when it needed to be solved. It, exa exactly. I know I know a lot of people complain that it was it was mm -hmm. more like crime thriller, but if you watch the Saw franchise, it really is a crime thriller movie. Especially you know, it, once you once you get to like Saw Two. At which, yeah. Honestly, yeah, like Saw Two is when it really picks up as a crime thriller about cops. Yes, and then once you get to like four and five, it's very much like yeah, so like it's 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 crime thriller because of Hoffman so, and the whole deal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like that wasn't a complaint for me. I already knew what Saw was about, 
but um but yeah i, I was just like it was okay you know yeah. <laughs> it didn't like hit the same notes for me that um say saw six did like, yeah, yeah dude yeah. like saw saw one two and three are three of my favorite films of all time saw saw one and two in my opinion are two of the best back-to-back movies i've ever dude, fucking they're, seen they're, in my they're life great. they're <laughs> like, great four four and five was good but you have to adjust to the the the, the change of tone in the films mm-hmm. and then one six like wraps it all together it, it it's a great box with a nice little ribbon on it like, like it's a when carrie finish. always came back oh yes fucking in the beginning dude, it was that tied it was awesome. everything together Yep, yep, a uh, big fan. So, you know, it, Spiral was okay. Jigsaw wasn't another one. It wasn't bad. Jigsaw, it was just, I thought it was. Eh, it was just okay. Yeah, you know? I, I can agree with you on that. Jigsaw was okay, but I feel like yeah. my opinions on Spiral kind of just. I, I was a little biased because I was really excited for it, and it was me the first too, Saw, man. Because it was the first Saw movie I ever seen in theaters. So I, I think it kind of holds a special place in my heart because of that. Oh, dude, listen, and, it, dude, it's awesome. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, no. Like, here's my, here's what the circumstances were at that time. I, I, uh, I, it was the first Saw movie I seen in theaters, and I was the only person in the fucking theater. <laughs> so I started out in the back, and I was like, if this movie sucks, I'm walking out. And then as the movie progressed, I moved up to the middle and then the and then the front. And then near the end, I was like that generic um, horror movie thing where you're yelling at the screen and you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. And no, dude, listen, look, I kind of just let myself get lost in it. Bro, you're, you're allowed to like the film. I, I, <laughs> it's OK to have a difference of opinion. Yeah, I just yeah, yeah. this is one of those things where I was just like, ah, I guess. Maybe I expected too much. Maybe yeah. I should have yeah, yeah, yeah. You just kind of chilled out. Oh, but I was very excited because Saw is a franchise that like I really like. So, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, dude. Fucking wait, wait a second. Speaking of Saw, uh I had this line around. <laughs> uh yeah, I mean I have the eight films one too, but uh okay, as we move on, let's I already talked about all the questions I had written down. So let's just riff. You, you want to fucking do that and just yeah, like, talk about horror movies and music? And, like, Dude, let's, let's do it, man. So, um, uh, what was your first uh, horror movie you ever watched, and what was the age, if uh, you can remember that far? Yeah. So I I can't tell you the first one I ever watched, but I can tell you the first one that I remember that made you um, be like, oh, I love this. Yes. Uh, I believe I was at my aunt's house, so I was probably around maybe seven or eight and it was uh, a nightmare on elm street the og yeah yeah okay all right the Good. og i i was an eight when the fucking ring <laughs> <came out. laughs> but yeah yeah For, uh, nightmare on elm street was the first and then not long after that the sixth sense uh with bruce willis yeah you gotta love the man on. bruce willie come on oh dude <laughs> Sixth Sense is, is, is a great great film and then uh, from then on, it was, it was, you know, I, that's when I started like really liking horror films. And around that mm-hmm. time, like the ring came out and the grudge came out and all those films were coming out in America and like internet uh, horror. And yeah, well, exactly. It doesn't, the ring doesn't count as internet horror, but it's an early. Uh, yeah, for sure. Early, like um, I can see the what's correlation. The word? There. What, what's the word I'm looking for? Early uh, um, uh, predecessor. Or yeah. Iterator, predecessor. Iteration. That's the word. Predecessor. Um, yeah, yeah, it seems like an early predecessor to internet horror films. Oh, definitely, yeah, and and uh, those films really piqued my interest. Now I, I went back and I watched The Ring and the Grudge, and I thought they were terrible. <laughs> but, but when I was a kid, and like scary images scared me, you know, I I yeah. loved those films. You know, now I'm a bit more mature in my taste. Like I, I like uh, Hereditary, uh, Midsummer. Mm. You know, movies like that are really cool. Just great me. films. Like, they are great films all around. They are. They are great films. They're really good. They're multi-layered. They're, they're written very well. And they make um, you think. That's the good thing about make, a horror film. Yes. You, you know a horror film is good if you if it makes you think. Be like, oh, what the fuck's going to happen I agree. next? You, you know a horror film is good when you're not necessarily scared during the movie, but you're scared afterwards when you're thinking about the movie. Like, dude, you know? the movie that did that for me was... So my brother, I know he's going to listen to this. I love him to death. He made me watch insidious one and two not insidious sinister sinister okay 
Okay, Sinister I've only, I've, I've only seen two. I've only seen the first one. I, the second one's on Netflix. Okay, but Sinister one and two back to back. By the way, I was at my grandma's house, and she doesn't live in like a two story house. And the first movie, as you know, takes place in a two story house. Yes, and I watched those movies back to back. And it fucked with my head. So since I live in a two-story house, I'm upstairs right now in my room. Right. So uh, you know how Mr. Boogie, he's, you know, terrorizing the kids upstairs and the whole whole deal, right? So uh, I went home that night. And how you know I was fucking terrified is I have a guitar amp around here somewhere. Where I put it in front of my door. Like, I put it right there <laughs> on my door just like, because i was so fucking terrified <laughs> wait wait i might be i might be fucking up which one's the one with with bagul uh is that insidious or sinister uh mr i think his name's mr boogie but he's in he he has like the mick thompson type face mask thing uh, was that the one i saw the one i saw was the one where the the kids were Killing they were like fil- they were like filming it, like handheld camera. Yeah, like they, that, that was that was sinister. That was sinister. What, so was there is is there a scene there where like you're looking at found footage uh, and it's it's people strapped to beach chairs as they're like yeah yeah, the pool? yeah 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 okay all right yeah yeah, yeah okay. that's sinister that's sinister okay okay then I did see that one yeah. I'm having flashbacks oh my god but <laughs> that 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 movie I honestly I didn't I didn't particularly enjoy. But look, but thinking back, like with those found footage uh, mm-hmm. uh, clips, they were pretty fucking disturbing. Like, I mean, for me, I like the type of horror I love is like, say, a slasher flick, like Michael okay. Myers or like a Halloween or something okay. like that. And like, I'm open to other types of horror, but what one type of horror like films that I don't fuck with at all, I won't even attempt to watch them because they, they just fuck with my head too much. And whenever something fucks with my head, it, I think about it for the next two weeks. Okay. Like it goes a little too far. <laughs> so those are movies like, uh, I think found footage movies are stupid. Like, um, I mean, well, unless they're like, uh, what's the word here? Unless they're effective, like Sinister was. Like, if you see found footage movies that look like they were made with a $20 camera, you know, those movies are bad. Yeah. The only, there's, there's only like one that I really like. And that's Blair Witch project. The first, no, I, I hate the Blair Witch project. You did. I, I hate it. I actually, <laughs> I think Cloverfield might be the only one that like, I really enjoy. I, I, yeah, I can see it. I, yeah. Clo- Clo- I liked Cloverfield and, uh, was there any other found footage film? Oh, uh, Great, great. The first Grave Encounters. I don't know if you've seen. Yeah, Grave yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't bad. You know, I enjoyed it. And I think there's a there's a lost art to um, as we're talking about horror movies. I actually have my name, my my first and last name. It's fucking right there. <laughs> I have my first and last name in two '80s horror documentaries. That's awesome. And they're on Shutter. Ah, uh, dude, Mouse keeps telling me to get fucking Shutter. I don't have Shutter. But I can tell you exactly where you can see my name too. It's like since they're like four hour a piece documentaries, right? Since they're eighties horror documentaries called "In Search of Darkness." Okay. And how I discovered the first one was because I'm a massive Slipknot fan. Corey Taylor's just the fucking man in my eyes. Dude, Corey you Taylor's know? awesome. You know, he's just the man in my eyes, no matter that was what. My, that, that was my first favorite band ever. I have a Slipknot vinyl hanging up over here. <laughs> <laughs> I have their first record on, like, first album on vinyl. Hell yeah, dude. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I don't have any cassettes yet, though. <laughs> so I'm not going that far back. Bro, no, I listen, I, I appreciate it, man. Like I said, Slipknot was my first favorite band, so I'm all about it. And, uh, and since I heard Corey Taylor's a huge wrestling fan, that's that's good for us <laughs> huge wrestling fan so if we so, ever get those so fucking lars frederickson of rancid yeah, well. yeah and that's good for us so if we ever get big enough we can be like oh let's fucking do this yeah so um he promoted in search of darkness the part one on his instagram and 
at that time I was like maybe this was 2018 so I was I was young I was like 16 at the time and I was at this time I was taking any work I could which was like I didn't have a steady job because I was wrestling all the time and like they like commitment and you're yeah free, fucking six hours a day you're in a hundred yeah. degree room wrestling people oh I get it so I would take like odd jobs like I would clean my grandmother's backyard or something like that so I I contributed to the first documentary and I got the Corey Taylor edition of the first one and the second one and what, what, I heard was that. like a like a kickstarter yeah okay and um I'll send you their stuff on Instagram since uh, the, they actually follow me on Twitter. The, That's awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and Chris Jericho had a um, version of part two that came out last year. And I seen that and I was like, I don't know which one I want more. Fuck it. I'll get both of them. <laughs> so I, I bought both of them motherfuckers. And I had, I have so many fucking posters, dude. That when I have the room, I'm gonna frame every single one of them. Oh, dude, I my room is so plain now, but I used to have just wall to wall fucking posters. Cause, I mean, posters are really cool, but I just don't want to. Hell, over here, I have uh, since my dad had a big ass box of uh, old WWF like '90s Attitude Era magazines, right? There were the ones that came with the fucking posters on the inside. Yeah. I, remember I have those. an Edge poster fucking hanging up right here. Oh, hell yeah, dude. I'll, I'll show you a picture of it later. It's, yeah, it's, no, po it's hanging up. Yeah. Posters, posters are awesome, but like, you don't, you don't want to like, it, there's something like kind of kitty looking about having posts everywhere, but when you, when you frame them bitches, it looks nice. It looks nice. Professional. Yes. Yes. Totally and, agree. And, uh, I have my name in those two uh, two credit rolls. And once, since I have the documentaries in a box and I have to write down what, like what time you see my name and then I'll send it to you. Be like, oh, yeah. keep a lookout. <laughs> Check it out. So um, those, those two documentaries are on Shudder. And what would you say is your favorite horror film of all time? Uh, man, That's going back to favorite... Hitchcock and like Psycho and, you know, yeah. that whole my favorite horror film of all time. I mean, for a long time, it was the first Evil Dead. Uh, oh my God, the, dude. The, the OG with, with Bruce Campbell. Not the, you the, gotta the love Bruce Campbell. The, re, the remake was good too, but- The I, remake the, the, was really good. I love it. It was, it but was. But it, nothing can one, top the original. No, the first one, in my opinion, is, is a classic. I, if I'm talking like, you know, it's been some years now. If I'm talking like now, if like- the one, like, if I'm going to sit down and watch a horror film, I'm probably going to put on Hereditary because yeah, I yeah. fucking love Hereditary. I think Ari Aster is an amazing director. Um, I love the story. I think Hereditary is fucking great. So if you if you could put together, if you could give me a list of 10, or if how many you could think of right now? See, would you say five is a good number? Yeah. So give me your top five horror films of all time. Okay. Um, Evil Dead, Hereditary, The First Saw. <laughs> and it's only because we we're just talking about them. So they're, yeah, they're, yeah, fresh, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. they're fresh in my mind. Uh, the First Halloween. Obviously, you got to go with it. Yeah, Halloween. definitely. Not a huge Friday the 13th guy. So, yeah. You know, I definitely I, I, I preferred Halloween. And uh, what's another one? Oh, my God. Maybe uh, what the fuck? Let me look at my, look at my room for nothing. <laughs> anything? Fuck, I don't know. That's 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 a tough one. You want to <sighs> just keep it to four then? I'm gonna go four with maybe like an honorable mention for I don't know Hellraiser. Dude, you gotta love you gotta love Doug Bradley, man. Yeah, I know Hellraiser probably. Because, so I put myself through, I don't recommend you do this to yourself at all. I watched every single Hellraiser movie in order. I, not, not back to back. Back to back. Oh my God. <laughs> I do not recommend that at all. It was, I, um, oh my God. Have you, have you seen the one with the, with the different actor as Pinhead? 
Yeah, that was um, Hellraiser Revelations. I was it good? No. <laughs> <laughs> It, oh. I, appreciate, I appreciate your honesty no it was dude oh my god so the only good part about him about the movie was the accountants who was also the director okay okay he was the only good part of the movie wow what a damn shame yeah i mean I, and i love the hellraiser series so i just love horror in general yeah yeah so like um it's it's just sad to see the progression of these films getting worse. I know. And worse. I know. Oh, I you know what? Completely unrelated. I apologize for segueing here. Did hey, you ever, did, go did ahead. You ever watch, did you ever watch Oculus? The um that one mirror movie? Yeah. I've seen bits and pieces, but I never watched the first. Bro, movie. honestly, for for a WWE produced movie, I didn't even not... know it was produced by the WWE until yeah. my brother told me about it. Bro, for a WWE movie, it's not it's not a bad horror film. It's pretty good. Cause let's be honest here, they make some pretty shit horror films. They do, dude. Uh, listen, let's take away horror films. They don't make great films, really. <laughs> <laughs> but they're fucking. I gotta be honest with you. I watched Oculus, and besides like some little things that I, I didn't like, it was pretty good horror film for the WWE. I was mm-hmm. shocked. I I would give that a shot if you ever have some free time. Yeah, oh, dude, I'm struggling to find guests, so I got free time almost all the time. <laughs> so, uh, I I would say I actually liked since I am a huge Kane fan. Oh, I'm, see, I'm, see I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Kane guy. Yeah, I, <laughs> dude, see no evil is a it's a bad movie, but in a good way. If you can okay. think of, if you could think about it, it's well, it 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 came out. It came out in in that era of yeah the grudges you know and the, the and it rings. Was, Saw three came out by the time yeah you know, it came out came in out. in that era so it wasn't listen I was a kid yeah I, I was I, dude I didn't I hate was, it I was three years old <laughs> oh yeah I actually <laughs> listen I'm sure if I went back and watched it now I'd be like this is dog shit but at the time I actually liked it I, I didn't think it was bad I was such a fan of that movie I bought it on Blu-ray along with its dude, sequel. I, I enjoyed it. And then I liked how Kane was like walking around backstage with like the, the fucking the hook and shit from the film. Like, yeah, I, I, I actually thought Sino Evil wasn't bad. And let's not talk about the imposter Kane storyline that. Kind oh, with Festus. Yeah. Yeah. But um, uh, going on to the second Sino Evil movie, it's got one of two, actually one of my favorite horror film actresses ever. Uh, Daniel Harris. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and the rest of the fucking planet. Yeah. <laughs> Cause dude, Halloween four and five, she fucking made those movies. She killed listen, otherwise not great movies. She was the star of that. She fucking, fucking killed them. Yeah. She did. She did. And and, and I thought and I thought she was super cute. Uh obviously when she yeah. was a few years older than Halloween four and five. But yeah, ob- obviously, because she's a child <laughs> back then. So I know yeah, that'd be a little but weird. She's, <laughs> she's, she's very pretty and she's she's a good actress. Yeah, I I, I agree. She made she yeah. made those films special. So um segueing from that, she's the only reason that movie she's she was what redeemed that movie and made it watchable. And yeah, I say I heard, watchable in quotations. I heard rough things about Sino Evil 2. That's why I said watchable. Yeah, yeah. In quotations. So you gotta, you know, watch yourself on that one. Yeah, no, I I, I heard and, and Sino Evil One was by no means a, a masterpiece. So Sino Evil Two <laughs> I, I heard very not great things about. Uh this is super unprofessional, but I'll be right back. I yeah. A door knocking. No, so, do your thing. Would you wanna, you know, kill time for maybe 15 seconds? Yeah, of course, dude. All right. Do your I'll thing. be right back. Yeah, yeah. So, like, plug some shit if you need to or something. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Just definitely. Kill time for me. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, we're live on the Culture Shock. Seth is taking a quick break. He's uh, checking something at, 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 at the door. But uh, my name is Bam Sullivan. I've been joining him tonight for a lovely conversation about pro wrestling and horror. And, um, yeah, he's back. Hey, Seth, welcome to the Culture Shock. How are you today? <laughs> Yeah, I feel super unprofessional. <laughs> oh, you're fine, dude. You're fine. This, this my, is this is this is that DIY shit, man. We're doing it ourselves, you know. Dude, c- come on. If there's nothing more punk than a a 
podcast from a laptop. I don't know what it is. Exactly, man. We're doing it. We're doing it. And um, we, we were talking about, okay, so my first horror film I ever watched was Final Destination 2, I think. Oh, two. I just rewatched 2. It two was when he, when he got the um, fucking uh, ladder through the eyes. And yes yep when when she had when she's uh she's pregnant or whatever log truck one. To... the log truck one yes yeah. yep i just rewatched that like a month ago um uh, so um those movies they they fucked me up so bad as oh dude i i couldn't i couldn't fly like i was a uh, terrified of flying because the I'm first terrified of driving movie. because of that movie <laughs> oh dude i those movies... and i'm trying to get my license right now <laughs> well good luck <laughs> uh, don't, 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 did you did you just did you see the article recently uh where they're trying to reboot it no no the the fucking the the car uh, the the lady was driving behind a log truck and the log came off and went through a fucking windshield really yes oh my god i just saw it on twitter like two days ago it just happened you have to somehow send that to me <laughs> i will and, and, and the, the caption was like every fucking like every millennial's worst fear just came true you know because <laughs> think about it it traumatized in it that movie franchise single-handedly traumatized an entire generation <laughs> oh yeah oh no, those people dude, those films one one and two were really great three was okay and then it started, it started getting a little crazy but yeah i i love that franchise that franchise was awesome i do too it has a soft spot in my heart because it was one me of too. the first ones i watched me too. I, I love the idea that like you can escape death, but it always follows you. Like that's it always such a cool. Comes. Yep. It's kind of cool like concepts. It's kind of like a triple H thing where you got to do the job, kid. Exactly. Like, it's, like, <laughs> it's like, it's like when, when, if you, if you mess up John Cena's comeback, his he, next move is always that comeback again. He yeah, will just keep going you know, for it over and over and over again. He's going to, he's going to make sure to put himself over. He will get those shoulder tackles in. He'll get the spin out power bomb. It's just like Final Destination. If you With all due respect list. to John, I love John. He oh, yeah, me too. I, I have I have a great story about John Cena. So I it was two days after my 17th birthday, he followed me on Twitter. That's awesome. I marked out like you couldn't fucking believe. That's <laughs> awesome. He still doesn't follow me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was um I, I was with my friend because uh, I remember I texted you about him when we retweeted like your when you were first trying to get your Twitter presence out and I retweeted okay. everything and like it was for the shirts and everything. We retweet and everything. But I told him about you and I was like, oh, yeah, here. And I was talking like I'm the only person that besides him before I told him about you, I'm probably the only person at my school that like knew about you and oh, was, yeah. like, a fan. And then I, you know, passed on the gospel of, uh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, you got to check this dude out. He's fu I told him, dude, you have to check this dude out. He's insane. I appreciate I'll, that, man. I'll, I'll, I'm I'll pretty fucking, I'm pretty fucking stupid. So I, I appreciate that. So just know you have a following in California. <laughs> yes. So We're doing it. We're going from coast to coast, baby. We're doing it. Unlike Shane McMahon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now I, I, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. So Thank I was talk I was talking to him and uh I was like oh we were just talking about some random bullshit cuz that was my entire plan for a podcast. I was going to start it with my buddies but we could never lock down a date and that's when I was planning with you originally to like schedule that first podcast. Yeah. Yeah. And uh like they were just we could never set down a date so I was like fuck it I can't lose this interview with you so I'm just going to start my own. <laughs> I did and uh, like we were talking and then I saw the notification on Twitter, John Cena followed you. And I was like, Oh, I passed it off at first, you know, because you know how Twitter is. There's obvious, there's, you know, there's fan accounts. Oh yeah. And, Stan accounts and shit. Yeah. yeah. Which are super fucking creepy by the way. I know it's, it's, and, and then like, and then like, there's also the RP accounts too. Oh, Oh, dude, those are even worse. I know, I know. Like, dude, I, I had someone trying to be Drew McIntyre text me yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> and they were uh, like, they were like, "Are you a fan?" I was like, "Fuck off." <laughs> oh man, yeah, dude, I I don't mind like the fan accounts. I, I I it's it's appreciated, but the RP stuff is pretty crazy. Like, I understand being a fan and like you know loving a wrestler to a point where like I'm such a big fan of his, but 
once you're like, I need this person in my life no matter what, like, you know, that type of, it's almost like an insane type stalker girlfriend relationship. It's, pr- or it's pretty wild, man. It's yeah, it's, it's crazy. And, and, and it's even, it's even wilder for me when it's about guys and girls on the, on the low, on the, on my level of the independence. Like we're not even, we're not even like superstars on television, you know, you're like, me, man. Exactly. We're, we're independent level people. And you have people that are like, uh, do you know, AJ Gray? Uh, I've heard the name before. But okay. I need yeah. To watch re- re- more really cool. Things. Really cool dude. Rhett wrestles for GCW. He has an RP. Like someone is RPing him on, really? on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> oh and my it's so god. Crazy. Like it's one thing if you want to like I don't know if you, uh, Jeff Hardy or whatever, but like someone I've on, come across someone so on the, many of those. <laughs> oh, me too. Like, someone <laughs> on, like, the independent level, like AJ was so crazy to me. Because like I mean I understand being a fan because as kids we were fans to a point where we've gotten, I say every wrestling fan has gotten to that point where they're sort of obsessive. Of course. You know what I mean? Dude, I, they I watch went to it fucking school. all the fucking time. Bro, I went to fucking school. Somebody should have stopped me. I went to fucking school when I was 13 with the Jeff Hardy arm Arm bands. Oh, dude, I was obsessed. Dude, so I get I had, it. Like for one year uh, for Halloween, I dressed up like The Undertaker. Like I bought the fucking the wwe shop fucking, yeah um, yeah uh costume where they had like the armbands that were like his tattoos and the trench coat and the hat the whole deal but speaking of wrestling uh as i continue this conversation i right here have some you know how we were talking about like wrestling belts and shit yeah of course uh speak of the fucking devil because uh there's this from my childhood <laughs> this Fantastic. motherfucker makes noise dude that's awesome it makes noise dude that's awesome that was the belt when i was growing up that was the fucking belt that's awesome and i also have the world title oh the big golds yeah obviously hell yeah man and it's it's awesome it's amazing to see the progression of these belts to where you see how, what this is fucking made out of? Oh, it's like foam, right? Yeah, it's a it's a foam belt. Yeah. But nowadays they're made out out of like not leather, but it's it looks pretty damn close. Wow. Like from from what it, I mean, I don't collect the belts anymore. But when I went to shop for somebody, I went to go check it out and see if see how it changed, and it changed so fucking much, dude. I seen it and I was like, oh my God. Yeah, because I, I remember them being kind of high quality. Yeah. I remember going to like Toys R Us and shit and seeing them like, you know, that that like Jack Specific foam shit. Dude, the Jack Specific action figures. Oh my God. My favorite. My listen, listen. I know that there was only like three body types, but I loved the Jack Specific figures. We I can... thought I thought their I thought their face scans were so much better than than Mattel's face scans. Yeah, so much better. Cause, dude, speaking of like toys and all that, um, I feel like every wrestling fan has those belts to where they're like, oh yeah, like I I feel awesome holding this belt. You know, of course, I mean? of course. And um, so as a kid, my grandparents to this day, I love them to death. To this fucking day, um, as a kid, my my brother is the one that got me into wrestling, and he told me the story of why he got me into wrestling. As a kid, he wanted to uh, be a wrestler, so he was like, he showed me wrestling, and he was like, "I'm gonna get him into it, so we can never stop talking about it." And then uh, now he regrets that decision. <laughs> <laughs> is he is he still a big wrestling fan or no? He watches it. If there's like, since he loves Stone Cold, Stone okay. Cold's his guy. So if there's something with Stone Cold on the network, not, well, Peacock now. Yeah, I know what um, you mean. If, if there's something with Stone Cold or Taker or, you know, something like that, he'll watch it. Okay. But he okay. won't be like hardcore watching every every pay-per-view. I got gotcha. you. On rotation. But he'll watch SmackDown now because he loves Pat McAfee. Oh, Okay. That being said, I like I watched, I knew about Pat McAfee and I watched him before the Adam Cole incident. So I watched that live as it happened. That's awesome. And I was like, 
once he seen that Adam Cole was going to be, once he said that Adam Cole was going to be on the show, I was like, oh, a wrestler. Hell yeah. And then uh, I seen that. He was like, fuck you, Pat. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I fucking texted my brother immediately. I was like, dude, you have to see this. And then Pat McAfee got hired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, I, um, I don't watch WWE as often as I used to. Like, for a majority of my life, WWE was like must. I, 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 if I, I couldn't miss a Raw or a SmackDown. Yeah. Now I don't, I don't tune in as much as I do. But dude, mm-hmm. SmackDown's killing it. Yeah. They, I, I think it might be the, the better product than, than Raw. Like SmackDown's yeah. really good. Ro- and- dude, Roman Reigns. I never thought. I never thought. I would consider myself a Roman Reigns fan ever in my fucking life. It's because of Paul Heyman. Let's be honest. Dude, no, his you're you're absolutely right. With Paul Heyman's guidance and, and his heel turn, now I'm the biggest it fucking was Roman Reigns perfectly. Mark. Oh at my the god! Perfect and, time and the arrogance. Ah, oh, so good, so good. Like he, like I I don't consider myself a smart. That's what the term is, right? Smart. Mark? Yeah, yeah. I don't consider myself one of those guys, but. I think I know enough about the business to where I know, yeah, this is going to be garbage. This is going to be good. Like, you know, yeah. Like I'm, it's to a point where I'm kind of numb to knowing what's good and what's bad. Yeah. Cause I, I am, cause I'm, uh, since I want to be a wrestler, I'm studying it religiously. Like I'm not a very religious person, but it like it's basically become my quote unquote religion to where I study it nonstop and like I I watch old Dean Malenko matches and like Eddie Guerrero and CM Punk from ROH with Chris Hero and Colt Cabana and yeah like, you know all these great wrestling matches. I even go back to like Japan and watch like some Bruiser Brody matches and like stuff okay. like that. And like Macho Man Randy Savage um Ricky Steamboat from WrestleMania three. I watched Hell that fucking, match yeah, dude. fucking religiously. It's a fantastic, it's a fantastic match. And I've, I can tell you, I've seen the, um, both the Iron Man match, both the latter match from WrestleMania five, WrestleMania 10, five, I was about to say five. I meant, yeah, the latter match from WrestleMania 10, the Iron Man match from WrestleMania 12, and the Stone Cold Shawn Michaels match from WrestleMania 14, a combined okay. at least 45 times. God damn, dude! I love those matches so much. I don't think well, they're. Understand. I mean, they're, they're they're great. They're great matches, and they're good matches to 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 Study watch and pick apart over and over again. Yeah, because like they, they're those type of matches. They just never get old. Even fucking Bret Hart versus Owen Hart at WrestleMania 10. That match never gets old. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Oh, it's so, dude. It's so smooth. Those guys, like, they make me look like I'm a fucking backyarder. Like they're I'm, so, <laughs> they're so good. I, I mean, I would, I would say that they, I, I would assume that they would be amazing pro wrestlers because they grew up in the fucking heart dungeon. Yeah. And from what I heard, get in the heart dungeon. You're, you're. Uh, it's a very. You're gonna get your fucking ass beat. Hard school. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, to segue to amateur wrestling, I have an amateur wrestling story from my freshman year. So, I mean, I've kind of gotten fat now because of I, I wasn't able I wasn't able to wrestle my senior year because of you know the c- circumstances at hand, which sucked. It sucked finishing out my senior year on Zoom, man. It yeah, it was just like, come on. I know. I'm sorry, man. That that shit does fucking suck. And but wh- how it happened, like how everything happened, it was the perfect set of circumstances because it was Friday the 13th and it was fucking raining and it was, yeah. It when everything went to shit and they were like, oh, two week notice, Friday the 13th and it was pouring rain. <laughs> so you can't write a better fucking story than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like if it, and dude, it was the day my Stone Cold Steve Austin t-shirt came in too. Oh, dude, what a great day. <laughs> and I was hoping to wear it on, you know, Austin 316 day and slam a couple of fucking Steve Weisers, but I couldn't. Ugh. So I was like, oh fuck, here we go. I know. I I, I forget that like kid like people had to experience that in school, like the fucking pandemic. I totally fucking forget. I I just feel bad for the like the teachers that are like teaching like fucking first and like 
from kindergarten to like maybe fifth grade. I feel bad for those teachers because these are like little ass kids. You know, I know, I know. I've, I feel so bad for those teachers, dude. I know my, my, my sister is a, a special ed teacher for like younger, young, like younger kids. Mm-hmm. And it was, she said it was rough, you know, like it's, it's hard enough to, to kind of like contain that in a classroom. Mm-hmm. You know, now they're at home on a camera. It's even fucking harder. Yeah. You know? And uh, going into that special education thing, since I told you, you, you remember, I told you beforehand that I have a slight case of cerebral palsy. Yeah. So that means I'm like, I'm slower at processing things. And you, okay. you've noticed this throughout the entire podcast. I can't put a fucking sentence together if I want to. <laughs> so it's just, I'm slower at processing things. I can't. Well, like, you, you carry it fucking well. I, I, I'm trying. I'm trying, man. <laughs> I'm trying. I think I've made it made it uh see i think i've uh you know done well so far yeah uh, yeah you have and plus i already told you about the um that scholarship i got which was oh yeah dude you know how i got that was i wrote a 500 word essay about my mom oh how that's awesome man and dude i if there's one thing i can tell you i was fucking weeping the entire time well say save that make sure you save that essay I I made sure to save it and yeah. I had I had my teacher print it out and give it to me. Good. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, that's that's the kind of shit that you want to save. Cause dude, oh my God. And since you remember how I told you about I don't know if I've told I told you about this, but uh since I was writing music for a short time and I write songs from here and there, like I'm probably never gonna do anything with them. But they're just like something to fucking get off my chest. Still poetry, like, man. You know what I mean? Still, yeah, still music. Like I write some pretty dark, fucked up shit, and it. I don't try to. It just happens. It's like, dude, if if it just feels natural to you. And uh, since I've been listening to bands like Whitechapel and Phil Boozman, he's the fucking man. And. Uh, well, have you heard of the band Whitechapel? With, of course. Uh, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Admittedly, I could probably only identify one song, but yes, I I, I know of Whitechapel. What song is? I have no idea. <laughs> you have to play it. Oh, uh, uh, that being said, I'll play it afterward because YouTube, YouTube, man, you, YouTube will catch me with a copyright strike, and I kind of can't, I can't have that. Oh no, I know, I know. But like mm-hmm. my 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 older cousin is he's big into Whitechapel. Yeah. I, but I found out that um, Phil's Booz, Phil Boozman, he had he had both his parents die by the time he was 15. Oh, that's right. So he went to live with his grandma and became one of the greatest fucking deathcore vocalists of all time. That's awesome. And same with Mitch Lucker. Well, his parents didn't die, but he was one of the greatest of all time because he he was the lead singer for Suicide Silence from like their beginning into like maybe 2011 or 12 or something like that i'm probably getting the date wrong twitter's gonna fucking hate me i don't care but uh back to that amateur wrestling story um it was freshman year and i started out at wrestling at 165 okay and wrestling at the high school level oh dude the weight cuts. Oh my God. I hate oh, it I've, so I've, I've, much. Dude, I've heard stories. I've heard the stories of the, the fucking dehydration and shit j- just to make a few pounds. Like I, 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 it's horrible. Oh, it's from, I can tell you from experience. Oh Lord. There's been so many times I've not eaten like the night before. And my dad has gotten so mad at me because I did not eat for a tournament in order to yeah. make weight. Yeah. There's, there was this one time, uh, I wrestled at a tournament. I was I worked my ass off to make 165 pounds, but I was underweight by 0.1. Ah, uh, and so my te- my coach was like, "Drink, he, drink a bottle of water." He was like, "Eat this granola bar." <laughs> yeah. So I fucking and that was the only thing I ate that day. And it was you got you got to keep in mind it was like 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, no, it's torture, it dude. The, it's it was torture. the only thing I've eaten in like three fucking days. So, but like, I look shredded, so it, it's all good. <laughs> I know. Oh, trust me. I, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I wrestled on the granola bar. I made weight on the fucking dot and I was super dehydrated. I was like, I was stanch was like, Oh, I was yeah. so sloppy. Yeah. You get like spaghetti legs and shit. You know, yeah. Like fucking... 
and since you know the, i already told you with my head and all that stuff and like all the brain shit um this dude i made it to the finals of the tournament i was super dehydrated and like the final match of the tournament this dude i was wrestling he looked like he had to cut an arm and a leg just to make weight oh he looked like say a not who's a real skinny small wrestler zach gowan spike dudley say it was say it was spike dudley facing great Kali. oh my god <laughs> yeah to put it in wrestling terms yeah so all I remember is we shook hands to start the match and I was like real quick on my feet. And then I, I shot for a shot and this guy grabbed me like this. He's not supposed to hook his hands, but he hooked his fucking hands, picked me up, slammed me on my head. I blacked out. Don't remember anything. I remember all I remember is I woke up. I regained consciousness with my hand raised. And I was looking over at my coaches, and they were just like, so apparently I beat the guy's ass. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's awesome. And this is a great colleague Spike Dudley situation. So I'm yeah. surprised. It looks like you're, you're, you're more deadly unconscious than you are. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you better watch out when I, get, when I lose consciousness. Yeah, we got fucking Bruce Banner over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um uh that that was that one amateur wrestling story that i really wanted to you know talk about and um so every year i would get bet i would go up at least 10 pounds I, I would start at 165 i'd go up to 170 175 i think 180 was my weight last year but i was like in like wrestling shape okay i was in amateur wrestling shape which i think I would say amateur wrestling shape and professional wrestling shape is they're two completely different beasts. Oh, well, pro professional wrestling well, shape isn't even really like in shape. It just looks impressive. You know, amateur amateur wrestling shape is 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 a functional shape. It's yeah. You know, professional wrestling is more for aesthetics and the way that oh, you look. It's just more for like the look of it all. Exactly, yeah. So, I was in really good amateur wrestling shape. So, since you said there was, it was two completely, two, it's like peas in the same pod. Yeah. Um. So, um, I would say if with the shape I was in, I would say if I knew how to like pro, like wrestle professionally, I could carry on a catch wrestling match with you for at least ten minutes. Yeah, sure. It, but nowadays, nah. You're gonna have to give me some time, <laughs> bro. I'm 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 two twelve right now. I'm I'm a little fluffy, so <laughs> I'm I'm like one eighty, and I feel fat. Like <laughs> oh, I'm I'm with you, man. Like it's one, it's one of those things. Uh, I I I've been struggling to get it off, but I know it's a fucking pain in the ass. But um, uh, so let's move on to uh, music and. Since you said that mu earlier in the show, you talked about how music is very influential to you. And we talked about how it's very influential in yeah. our lives. Yeah. Uh, what would you say is your, if you could put together, let's just say four or three, put together four or three bands of all time, who, who would they be? Yeah, I'll, I'll just list off um, whatever I can think of that have yeah, 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 yeah. impacted me the most. Um, obviously, Rancid. Yeah. The Misfits. Yeah. Uh, Guar. Rancid's it's a given. Yeah. The, obviously. Dude, uh, have you seen that video of, uh, um, I think his, I think his name is Odorous Urungus. Odorous Urungus? Yeah. When he was reading Sally. Uh, the, like, of course. The, the Loudwire video. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. Odorous Urungus, rest in peace. Yeah. What am I love I, that, I man. Fucking, Dave, Dave Brocky, the guy that plays Odorous Urungus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucking love that dude. But yeah, no. Uh, Misfits, Rancid, Guar, 100%. Mm -hmm. uh in flames is, is a huge huge inspiration to me i have a, um oh i think i have an in flames poster around here somewhere dude in flames that's one of my favorite metal bands of all time uh system of a down is, is a huge influence to me uh alice in chains another huge band of mine tommy dreamer wait was it tommy dreamer yeah yeah man yeah 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 
Yeah, no, though probably those those five or six I listed are probably the most influential to me Let's in my say life. If you could put together a tour of bands that tour together for like say however long a tour lasts. Yeah. If you could put together a dream tour, who would be on that tour? Oh, I would for me, like Misfits Guar and I see, every one of them is in the prime of their career. Oh yeah. Misfits Guar I, ICP, I think would be the mm-hmm. craziest fucking tour. So uh you know how you were talking about wrestling society x <laughs> yeah uh i went back and actually watched every single episode of wrestling society x in order oh i've i've seen the whole fucking series a hundred million times and uh it took me like maybe after the second episode when they showed the intro it took me until the second episode to uh, to know that seth rollins well, the man who is now known as Seth Rollins wrestles in wrestling society. Yet. Yeah, Tyler Black. Yeah. And I found out that he, how he um, got that name was from like Harry Potter and something else. Like okay. He combined two. Oh, Sir- uh, S- Sirius Black? Yeah. He, he got he got the black from that and then he got Tyler from some, somewhere else. I can't okay. remember the quote right now at this moment, but I go. I don't go into my research to like, I'd be like, Oh, I find out where they live. Like, you know, I don't go that far deep into it. I just go into it to where it's a informal interview to where I just spit out random. Yeah. Shit facts. And since we were talking about horror films, I'm, I was actually going to go to school to learn how to make like monsters like Frankenstein. Yeah. And you know, shit like that because I'm pretty sure you've seen the movie Seven, right? No. What's in the box? Brad Pitt? Never. Oh, dude. Never. You have to. You You said Seven? Yeah, Seven. Okay. It was made in 1995, and it's got Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman in it. Okay. It's it's an amazing film. And it's got... It's got Kevin Spacey before he turned into a piece of shit. (laughs) No, I'll, I'll put that on the list, man. Yeah, but... What I really want to do is I just want to learn how to scare the shit out of someone. And like, I want to make someone's head say, you know how they make like fake heads and shit. Yeah. Say, for example, you, I'll put you in the fucking chair. I'll put all that like plaster shit on you. And then I'll just look at you and like, you know, sculpt out your head so you can put it in the freezer. Just, yeah, that's awesome. You know, be like, oh, I got a head in the freezer. Be like, hey, Carl. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, no, dude, that's cool. I like that stuff. Those uh, fucking uh, special, that old school special effects shit. I'm yeah. all about it. Practical effects. CGI yep, can go fuck itself effects. all the way. Uh, so I, I, listen, the, 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 the best movies are the ones that blend the two. Yeah. But when you, when you rely on the CGI, it's, it takes me way out of the movie. When, I'm, I, when I'm talking about CGI can go fuck itself. I'm talking about those early 2000s. Oh, I know. Lincoln Park, like, oh, like. I know. I, I, I don't like. <laughs> it. I understand that it's cheaper and faster, but bad CGI. Don't like, let your don't let your movie be relied on by a fucking no, computer. No, like amazing CGI is okay. Like the Marvel and, movies has amazing CGI. Right, and even that's, that's like the, that amazing level is still like okay. Yeah, but like bad CGI really takes me out. Really it makes me I go. Can't. I'm not invested in this movie anymore. No, my 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 sense of immersion is gone completely. Yeah. And since we're talking about like, you know, special effects and all that, see my plan for my house since I want to buy a house and like do a whole bunch of stuff. I want to have say a Franken a um standee, a life-size statue of Michael Myers, Jason, like all the horror icons and I'll just have them like around the house somewhere just so if somebody comes over and it's the middle of the night. They look over, and then they just see that in the fucking, you know, they see that in the darkness, and they're like, yeah. "Why did I come here?" Yeah, I just want to scare people. No, that that reminds me of like uh, Danny Filth's house. Danny Filth has a pretty crazy fucking house. So and does his, Charles uh, Robinson. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, so does Charles Robinson. Oh really? Has, yeah, I'll send you the video. Okay. He has a whole fucking. Whole, Dude, Dan- like in in and, and Danny Filth's kitchen. He, he, he removed the tiles and replaced it with glass, and he has real skeletons under the glass. Dude, that's crazy. I know. It's fucking sick. <laughs> there's a, bro, there's this coffee table I want to buy, 
that it's like a glass coffee table, right? And but it's got a J like a Jason Voorhees in it. That's awesome. And you know, there's the Jason Voorhees at the bottom of a New Jersey lake. Really? Yes. I can't remember <laughs> what lake it is right now, but yeah. it's in the bottom of a New Jersey lake. Oh, that's awesome. Like chained down like in the movies. Yeah, yeah. And uh is it is it is it the is it the kid or does he have the the, the mask on? The like part seven Jason. Okay, okay. Like grown adult. Ah. Yeah, yeah. So um since we're talking about like you know standees and all that stuff, that moves on to animatronics. I do not fuck with those whatsoever. Because of one thing, when I was a child, my mom had a six foot Santa Claus that moved around. And I was a very, like, I was a scared kid. Yeah. Once you see Santa Claus without a head, your shit changes. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Because there was one day when he, he would normally, like, parade around, right? You know, whatever. But my brothers popped the head off, put it in, since we had a glass case that was like a, um, like, a, it was a display case for angels because my mom was a very religious person. Okay. So she put it in there. And then my brothers would fuck with me so bad. They were like, go near it. Go near it. Go near it or I'm going to punch the fuck out of you. Go near it. And like, so I think that kind of cemented in me where I, I just don't, I don't fuck with those things, man. I can't. I can't. If it wasn't for that, I could, but I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once no, shit starts it, moving, I either run or I swim. <laughs> like, no, listen, it's, it's like when you get scratched by a cat when you're a kid and now you don't fuck with cats no more. Like, I, like I, I, I just can't do it, man. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know how long we've been going for, but how you feeling, man? Good man, good. I'm um, I'm getting a little tired. So you want to you want to wrap this up? It's it's late here in New York. Yeah, and uh, you probably can't tell, but it's fucking hot as shit I, in my room. I, I can I can tell. I apologize. Oh but, no, it's not it's not your fault, man. But you know, time zones. I know. I, I forget that you're three years uh, three years three, three hours. Years. Oh fuck! Three. <laughs> it's seven fifty seven here. Uh, yeah, it's almost eleven here. And I still have um, that. Um, you, you remember your bloody back? Oh yeah. The, the picture. Yeah. I still have that as my background. Get the fuck out of here. For my new phone. <laughs> Let me pull it up. Give oh, me that's there. so funny. Uh, would you mind killing time as I pull this up? No, no, no. Um, what should I do? Uh, uh, did you already, did you promote shit already? No, no. So any, anyone watching or listening, thank you. Uh, if you want to follow my stuff, uh, it's a very easy. It's at Bam Sullivan across literally everything. So Twitter, Twitch, uh, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. At Bam Sullivan. That's B-A-M-S-U-L-L-I-V-A-N. No underscores, no numbers, no nothing. Bro, that's that's fantastic. Still repping it, dude. It's been Absolutely over a year. fantastic. That's amazing. So... Um... <laughs> You, do you do Twitch stuff at all? I, I, I did for a while. Um, I kind of fell off a bit. But since I quit my full-time job, I'm going to be streaming more. So, it, uh, Wait, do you do PC or like console? Both. Uh, do you have a PS4? I do. Then we could probably play some games together on Twitch. Let's do it. That would be dope. Since yeah. I have a Twitch channel, that's not as big as I would like it to be. All of yeah. my social medias, believe it or not, aren't as big as they should be. No, but, I got you, man. It, it, dude, it's 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 fucking it's a lot of work, man. But yeah, I'll send you because I don't remember I don't remember my username. I think it's the rancid kid, but I'll send yeah, you over I, my I, I I I'm already following you on Twitch, dude. I, I no I no no no. I mean I mean my uh my my PSN account. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I think it's the rancid kid. So I'll send you over my, my stuff right. and we'll, we'll, we'll so, connect. Um, as we wrap up, there's one thing I need to say. So do you know who Bo Burnham is? I love Bo Burnham. Dude, have you seen Inside? I've only listened to All Eyes on Me, which is like one of my favorite songs at the moment right now. Oh my God. You have to watch the entire special. Okay. Like, but there's one thing I need to tell you. There's... I, like the special's so good, but at the end it gets really sad. Dude, I dude during All Eyes on Me, I was I was legitimately sitting in my car and I was just crying hysterically. <laughs> I don't even know why. It just hit me in such a way. But it's like he's so good at that. He, you know he is I mean? really he is really good at like, that. Like I tweeted a few days 
fuck last night it was like 10 30 at night i was i tweeted at bo burnham i love you <laughs> dude like like not only is he funny but he's actually a great singer songwriter you his know like social awareness good. is fucking insane yeah he's great he's awesome i love bo like there is there's two songs there's shits and welcome to the internet okay welcome to the internet oh my god i will send you i'll send you a animated video i found of welcome to the internet that it describes the internet perfectly, both good okay. and bad. Yeah, and, I'm all. Um, you know how I talked about earlier of uh, how Instagram already came for me. Yeah, the, the I love how in the wrestling community, the one time I voice my opinion, I get torn to shreds. The one because normally I'm very quiet. I'm like, yeah, that's cool, whatever, you know. But the one time I voice my opinion, I get torn to fucking shreds. What was the opinion? Uh, so you know how Alistair Black, well, now known as Malachi Black, yeah, which I mean, I, I mean, I love the guy as a wrestler and I've I've watched him for many years. I, I like it, I like him as a person and a wrestler and all that stuff, but the name, the I, I just can't get behind the name, man. Behind uh, Malachi, my brother's name is Malachi, but it's spelt differently, like, it, yeah, I. I liked I liked Tommy End and I, I liked Alistair Black. I like I I I love him as a like a wrestler and like you know his yeah. names and all that. But how my brother's name is spelled is M A L A C H I. Since my mom was a very religious person, she got all our names from the Bible. I got gotcha. you. And like you know the Book of Malachi and all that shit. Yeah. But um, how he spelt it just irked me the wrong way. I think that was because of the way I grew up. Okay. With, like knowing how it's spelt and how, how I was taught how it was spelt. That, that just like really pushed a button with me. I don't know why, but it did. You know okay. what I mean? It's just one of those things. And then the one time I voice it on Instagram, I get torn to shreds. Uh, people hate me now. I'm like <laughs> people, people care way too much, man. They care way too much. You're allowed to have your opinion. You know, people just, there's no reason to jump down someone's throat for something so tr- trivial like that you know yeah like i think it was yeah it's just because of the way i grew up and the way i know like i was taught that it was spelt just seeing it spelt like that just clicks a button with me you know what i mean oh yeah and that's totally fine man no one should jump down your throat for that who gives a fuck and i was because it was on the heel versus face um uh instagram account they they posted malachi black debuts yeah. in aew and then i corrected it and i, I put like you know when you correct a text message I put that and then I put the way I, I learned how it was spelled. And then everybody immediately tore down my throat. They were like, it's spelled differently because it was in the comic books. And like that, that's how it's supposed to be spelled. And I was like, dude, the book of Malachi since like, you know, Bible shit. Yeah. And he was like, and then th- I had this one fucking guy. I mean, I normally never let anything that trivial get to me, but th- this this felt personal to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this dude, he was like, he was like, there, he's a demon character. So, you know, devils and all that stuff. And I was like, there's, there's, uh, there's devils in the Bible, man. Fuck. The devil was an angel. If you look at Christian, Christian mythology and all that. Yeah. Stuff, and you actually read the Bible. I was forced to as a kid, but um, with my knowledge, he was, he was a devil outcast or like he was an angel outcast from hell, not hell, but uh, heaven and all that other crap. But uh, I was like, there's an entire, cause I found out there's an entire religion devoted to the book of Malachi because okay. there was a philosopher or a philosophizer. I think, I think that's how it's said. There was a philosophizer in like the late 1300s or some shit named Malachi. And, uh, he lived from like 1300 to like 1500 AD or something like, well, not that long, but yeah, not that short of a time period, but like, that's when he was active and all that stuff. It was, I just found out all this shit. And then I like laid down the facts I knew and everybody tore me to shreds. So I was like, come on, well, man. Welcome to the I internet. Just, like, <laughs> I was like, come on, man. I, I, I mean, I know I love the internet wrestling community, but come on. Yeah, so trivial no. as a name. Like, I know, I know. It's not even worth it. It's not even worth it. So I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm done. I'm just not gonna do it anymore. 
<laughs> if I have an opinion, my... I'll just keep it to myself. <laughs> like... I know. I know. It's, trust me, that's that's a skill that I'm still working on myself. So I, I get it. And that's hard for me because from what I told you, I speak my mind a lot. Yeah. And that gets me in trouble a lot. It absolutely will. Like dude, when I was in first grade, I start like I had my hair cut like Randy Orton. It was the whole deal. I was it was the height of my wrestling. And okay. I, I got suspended for choking kids out, for putting them in the fucking Hell's Gate. Whole deal. <laughs> Hell's Gate. Like oh, whole deal. Awesome. And yeah. But um so I'm really glad you were on the show. I dude, thanks for having me, man. I had a blast. So uh, let's say this will where we wrap it up. Yeah, for sure. Because I don't want to drag you all night since it's getting late over there. Yeah, no, unfortunately, it, it is it is getting late. So uh, plug your shit if you haven't already. But, you know, yeah, that's, no, how, that's how we end the show. Plug your Listen, stuff. I'll plug it again. Uh, anyone listening or watching, thank you very much. Uh, I Seth's appreciate great, it. Seth's a great dude. He's given me an opportunity to talk to you guys. My uh, my socials at Bam Sullivan. That's pretty much on everything: YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and the social medias that haven't even been invented yet. At Bam Sullivan, B A M MySpace, the whole deal, like oh, my, MySpace 2.0. You know, everything. <laughs> it's all Bam Sullivan. All of it will be in the link in the description. Oh, I appreciate that, and Seth, th- thank you, man, for having me on your show. Um, it w- I was a pleasure. Thank this you. This has been five years in the making, man absolutely man it was and worth it this video this uh video version of the podcast will be processed in 4k excellence so excellent the highest you know so you can see my giant fucking head in 4k and you could see excellent. my shit teeth like <laughs> hey man we all got something but thank you all for right. having me man i really appreciate so, it thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining us and see you later